Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Industry One, and we have got one of my most anticipated walkthroughs in all of YouTube, for me at least, Resident Evil 4 on professional difficulty. This is going to be a mixture between a walkthrough and a speed run. And of course, this is leading into the new Resident Evil 3 that's coming out soon. So if you're watching this now, then obviously we're just trying to get you pumped up for that. So I'm going to be using strategies for speed running, and I'm going to be using strategies for just regular walkthroughs. We're not going to be getting everything. We're not going to be taking out every single enemy, but in some cases we will. It's going to be a mixture of the two to show you guys the best strategies. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, as it really, really helps out and let me know what your favorite Resident Evil game is. Resident Evil 4. Specifically, the costume that we're going to be using is going to be costume 1. That is Leon's RPD costume from Resident Evil 2. I'm very excited to bring this to you guys. Hopefully you will all enjoy. Thank you so much for all the love and support. And of course, it's go time. 1998. I'll never forget it. It was the year when those grisly murders occurred in the Arklay Mountains. Soon after, the news was out to the whole world, revealing that it was the fault of a secret viral experiment conducted by the international pharmaceutical enterprise, Umbrella. The virus broke out in a nearby mountain community, Raccoon City, and hit the peaceful little town with a devastating blow crippling its very foundation. Not taking any chances, the President of the United States ordered a contingency plan to sterilize Raccoon City. With the whole affair gone public, the United States government issued an indefinite suspension of business decree to Umbrella. Soon its stock prices crashed, and for all intents and purposes, Umbrella was finished. Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Corny, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? <laughs> I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. Oh, you crazy American. It's a direct order from the chief himself. I tell you, it's no picnic. I'm counting on you guys. It was right before I was to take on my duties of protecting the president's daughter when she was abducted. That's the ultimate reason I'm in this lonely and rural part of Europe. According to our intelligence, there's reliable information about a sighting of a girl that looks very similar to the president's daughter. Apparently, she's being withheld by some unidentified group of people. Who would have thought that my first job would have been a rescue mission? Freezing. So cold all of a sudden. Eh, must be my imagination. Sorry it took so long. Just up ahead is the village. I'll go and have a look around. Yeah, we'll stay and watch that car. 
Don't want to get any parking tickets. Right. Parking tickets. Good luck. Jeez. Who are these guys? Did you say something? Leon, I hope you can hear me. I'm Ingrid Hunnigan. I'll be your support on this mission. Loud and clear. Somehow I thought you'd be a little older. So the subject's name's Ashley Graham, right? That's right. She's the daughter of the president. So try to behave yourself, okay? <laughs> Whoever this group is, they sure picked the wrong girl to kidnap. I'll try to find some more information on my end as well. Good. Talk to you later. Leon out. All right, so as we begin, the first part of this, we're actually not going to be taking any enemies out. We're going to be pretty much just running straight through. The only enemy we do take out is the one that is pretty much mandatory. So right here will be our first enemy. Uh, excuse me, sir? I was wondering if he might recognize a girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? ¡Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. Freeze! I said freeze! Very simple. Just shoot him four times straight up, and then that's it. Is everything okay? There was a hostile local. I had no choice but to neutralize him. There are still others surrounding the area. Get out of there and head toward the village. Take whatever measures necessary to save the subject. Understood. As you can see, we are going to be uh, showing the cutscenes, but you can skip these cutscenes if you don't want to worry about them. We're going to do a quick turn right here, and we're going to go ahead and head to the left. We're not going to pick up any items. But we are going to shoot this crow. We're going to wait till we get to the shadow and then shoot the crow. We are not going to save the dog, which I usually always save the dog. But we need this hand grenade, so pick that up. But we ain't. We aren't going to need the wolf or dog's help at all. Make sure you stay left of that tree right there. And make sure you stay right of this one to avoid the traps. And you can pretty much just run straight through the rest of the time. The reason we're not saving the wolf dog is because we're going to take out El Gigante in one shot. Therefore, we don't need the help from the wolf. Normally, I would always use the other other way. Stick left of this tree, wait for him to attack, and then move forward. Should be able to get by without taking any damage. Now, it's not a goal of mine to do this entire walkthrough without taking damage, but it is going to be uh, something that I strive for. So if I can get around enemies without taking damage, that is what I'll go for. Leon, how you holding up? Bad question, Honigan. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. Hope you find it useful. I'll take a look at it, thanks. Now I'll do my best to explain this part. We're going to go up here right before the logs, shoot this guy in the back seven times, then we're going to switch over to our grenade. Everything else you don't really have to do, just switch over to your grenade. Move over to the left side, we're going to get around this guy. If he does attack you, bait him a little bit, and then we're going to go ahead and head inside here. Why these people? Son of a 
Once the cutscene's over, move to the left, aim, and try to shoot your grenade through here and then go up. If done correctly, it should take out the window and take out a bunch of enemies and get this cutscene. We're going to go ahead and pick up another hand grenade, and then we're going to do a quick turn two times around to come back, and we're going to exit out the window that we just opened up. We're going to immediately do a quick turn, move to our left, and we're going to throw the grenade at our feet right here. We're going to jump over this so that we get invincibility frames, and go ahead and switch back to our handgun and reload. Oh, la campana. Es hora de rezar. Tenemos que irnos. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Hunnigan, I have some bad news. I've confirmed the body of an officer. Something's happened to the people here. Leon, you need to get out of there. Look for a tower and follow the trail near it. Got it. Congratulations, you just beat the uh, one of the hardest parts in the game, and you've done it uh, pretty much within 20 seconds if you skip the cutscenes. So we're going to go ahead and grab everything here again. This is not a speed run, so during these sections, I am going to be grabbing as much as I can. So this section, all that's left is us just grabbing everything that you can around here. And the reason that you want to do that is because there's going to be a yellow herb that you're going to want to pick up and other items just to make things a little bit easier for you. It's not a true speed run, but I kind of mix both strategies to make sure that we set ourselves up for success a little bit later on. So hopefully you like this style. Again, let me know what you think of in the first video. If there's anything that I need to change up or you like for me to do it a specific different way, let me know as I always try, uh, strive to remain better and to do better walkthroughs for you guys out there. But uh, as far as this part goes, that's it. So again, the first thing you do as soon as that, uh, you actually have gameplay during this section, move up and get right before you get to those logs, shoot the guy in the back with the barrel seven times. Once you do, switch over to your grenade. And that grenade is the one that we picked up when we shot the crow. Once you've done that, move forward. Try to avoid any damage. Go inside the room. You'll have the cutscene. As soon as it's over, turn left just a little and aim a little down. Shoot your grenade through the tiny window. That's going to uh, blow up a few enemies outside, which will cause the next cutscene. And it'll also blow up the actual window where all the wood is so that you can climb through. Once you do that, head upstairs grab a hand grenade again and then go back down the same way you came go out the window move to the left and then right in front of that fence aim down throw your grenade wait about a second and then use the climb over action to be able to get through and uh there you go i mean it, it seems like it's uh, kind of tough to figure out and it will take you a few times to get it but i promise you will be able uh to get it lickety split so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section now so we'll see you then
The only thing I need to tell you about this section is we're just going to take everybody out. I don't need to really guide you in any way, but you do want to shoot this down because we want to make sure that we don't dirty this pendant. If you do dirty it, it will only be worth a thousand as opposed to ten thousand, and you're going to want as much money as you can, obviously. Always go for the legs. Go for a kick afterwards if you can't. If you can't do the kick, then once they actually get on the ground from shooting them in the legs, you can easily knife most of the enemies. Very easy to take out. There's really nothing else to explain here. We are going to be grabbing the medallions because we are going to be going for the upgrade which is a free upgrade if you grab 10 medallions however you're only going to find a seven in this area so you're just going to see me uh, taking out every single individual enemy here while we're doing this we're going to be able to pick up all of the ammo that we use so you don't have to worry about conserving ammo as there is a lot of ammo and stuff like that to pick up around here a total of seven medallions and a lot of pickups so, uh, of course, I'm only going to do commentary during the parts that need to be said. If you do want to watch the free-flowing commentary, then you can check out the live streams that we do for each chapter. Uh, check those out. Obviously, they're on my main page. That way you can see kind of the strategies that we go through while we are learning each and every single level. So, enjoy the rest of this section, and then we'll move on from there after this. Up ahead, we're going to have a boulder to dodge. Very easy to do. You're going to hold down the X button. That's if you're on a Xbox 360 controller. Keep pressing it down. At the end, you're going to do whatever prompt it tells you to. In this case, it's X and A at the same time. Once you've done that, go ahead and move forward. We're going to grab these two collectibles up here. 
Whatever you do, try not to restart this checkpoint, meaning that what you do is going to be the first time. Do not restart the checkpoint. All enemies will be placed a little different and do different things if you do restart it. So continually move forward. We're not going to pick anything up in this section right here. If you just keep moving forward, as you can see, you can get by all the enemies without worrying. Super clock. Double X to open the door, and now we're safe. We're going to go ahead and pick up everything that we see inside here as well. We'll shoot both of these dynamites because there is a green herb, and we'll be able to mix that green herb with the yellow and red herb that we've already picked up. That will give us max health. It will upgrade our health, but we're not going to use it until we need to. And that's it for Chapter 1-1. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching the video. Obviously going to do a little inventory management and check here. Um, it's been my pleasure to bring it to you, so we'll continue on, and I'll see you at the end screen. Don't you think? <clears throat> oh. You're not like them? No. You? <clears throat> okay. I have only one very important question. Do you got a smoke? Got gum. Perfect. The big cheese. What? All right, there you go, ladies and gents. As you can see, 92 hit ratio and 22 enemies killed with zero times died. Now, my goal is not to get 100% on the hit ratio or anything like that. It's just to complete these chapters in the best efficient way possible. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Thank you again for watching. And of course, I will see you on chapter 1-2. Peace out. Feeble humans. Let us give you our power. <laughs> Soon, you will become unable to resist this intoxicating power. Wake up. Ay, ay, ay. Crawl out of one hole and into another. You want to tell me what's going on here? Americano, see? Now, what brings a bloke like you to this part of the world? Oh, hey, easy, whoever you are. <sighs> Name's Leon. Came here looking for this girl. Seen her? What, are you supposed to be a cop or something? Nah, you don't look the type. Maybe. Okay, let me guess. She's the president's daughter? <laughs> That's too good for a guess. Wanna start explaining? Psychic powers. Nah, <laughs> just kidding with you, amigo. I overheard one of the villagers talking something about the president's daughter in the church. And who might you be? Me llamo Luis Serra. I used to be a cop in Madrid. But now I'm just a good-for-nothing guy who happens to be quite the ladies' man. Why'd you quit? Phew, <laughs> policia. You put your life on the line. Nobody really appreciates you enough for it. Being a hero isn't what it's cracked up to be anymore. I used to be a cop myself. Only for a day, though. I thought I was bad. Somehow I managed to get myself involved with the incident in Raccoon City on my first day in the force. That is the incident with the viral outbreak, right? 
I think I might have seen a sample of the virus in a lab at the department. Do something, cop! After you! Now! It's Leon. Sorry I couldn't get in touch sooner, but I was a bit tied up. You're okay, right? I'm fine. There was a male civilian held captive. According to him, Ashley's in a church somewhere. What happened to him? He managed to escape. Do you have a fix on the location of that church? No, but apparently there's a secret passage in the village that leads there. I'm heading back to the village. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Resident Evil 4 Pro Chapter 1-2. Stranger. Over here, stranger. This section can be super easy if you follow my strategy. We're going to grab this ammo here. We're going to immediately head out. Now, whatever you do, uh, when you do this, make sure you skip all the cutscenes. Because I kind of spliced the cinemas together and watch exactly what I do. Gonna make a beeline over to here, dodge him. You should be able to get in here, as well as uh, grab the shotgun ammo, open the door, and we're gonna climb up the ladder. If you do it quick enough, you won't get hit by that guy. Do a few quick turns to uh, grab the first key, that, or insignia key that we need. And then you're gonna wait here for about five or six seconds. And the reason you wanna wait is because there's guys right below you. If you wait, it'll give you the proper timing so that you actually miss these guys. As you can see, he's right to the right, and you miss him. Now here you might want to dodge just to be careful and then make your way up to the right along the path. You'll notice there are a lot of guards following us right now, so this is not something that you want to dawdle. You want to make sure you get that quick enough. Go ahead and shoot this barrel here. You shouldn't take damage as long as you're far enough back. And then you can get over here fast enough to grab the second piece and then you'll be able to get in. So we don't see the merchant in uh, this section here, obviously. Uh, we just continue forward. There's no reason to. Unless you want to. Again, this is just my interpretation of the walkthrough. Uh, some places we're going to be doing a lot of discovering, and other places we're going to be going really fast. The only things that you'll get here are just weapons and ammo that you will literally use by fighting uh, endless amounts of enemies that will just keep coming. Like four or five waves of enemies will come in that section if you just continually try to take them all out. So it's almost not worth the trouble. Just get in, do exactly what I did immediately, skip the cutscenes. It will not work unless you skip the cutscenes. Even though you saw them on mine, make sure you skip them. Now here, there's only one thing we really need, and that's gonna be the mask that you see right there glowing. That's really the only very, very important thing you need. So we're gonna make sure that we hit this guy first just to stagger him a little bit, and then we should be able to climb this here. If you continually move forward, you won't get hit. Take out the window, move the other side, and we're gonna move up here as quickly as you can. Wait a few seconds. That is so that it, uh, Kind of messes them up there a little bit. Nobody will enter this room from that previous room. We're going to go ahead and grab this mask here. As you can see, he'll stay right there, but he will not enter. Go ahead and grab a herb here, because we'll need it to uh, a little bit later. And just watch out for one guy. And just It's very easy to dodge these guys. You can tell which way they're doing it. Stick to the left side, and you should be able to get around that guy without any problems. Now, no one else is going to come after you at this point. There is going to be one guy here. We're going to go ahead and take him out because we're going to grab a few of the items down at the bottom. Again, the knife meth or the shoot him once and then knife him the rest of the time is a great method for one-on-one -on -one enemies, sometimes two-on-one -on -one as well. Pick up a few items here. Uh, you can pick up a fish if you want, but obviously we don't need that fish. I mean, our whole goalie here is not to take any damage for as long as we can, so... That's pretty much the chapter. I'm not even kidding you. It's that simple. Um, I know that probably looked really hard getting past that room, and you've uh, you probably only seen it done that quickly in speedrun routes, because that's usually about what the speedrunners do. But I kind of changed it up a little bit as uh, I want to make sure that you guys can get through it on your first time as well. So instead of rushing when we're up on the roof grabbing the first piece of the key, uh, wait a few seconds. And then if you do that, the guards will be in different placements, 
and you don't, and you can kind of just like skate right by them. It might take you a few times, but uh, you should be able to get it, and it's not a difficult strategy. Make sure you have a notification set to turn on, and make sure that you have all notifications on because. Well, you want to be notified whenever new videos come out and all that kind of jazz. Also, don't forget, we are now uh, members, uh, or should I say, I now have memberships on YouTube. So if you want to uh, become a member, there are four different tiers. There is uh, The Boss, there's uh, Solid Snake, Big Boss, and Superman tiers. Whichever one you think that you want to help out with, remember this is our job now, doing YouTube full-time again. So any little helps, and hopefully uh, you guys uh, are excited for us to be back. Here it's a very easy puzzle. It's going to be the first one and the third one. So it's going to be up and then left. And that's pretty much it. There's just a few items to collect and then the end cinema. So this one is probably one of the shorter uh, chapters, but the next chapter is definitely going to be a little bit longer as there are a lot more sections that we have to go through. This one, they thought you were going to take a very, very long time in that first section there, which you can get by it within, you know, 20 seconds if you're smart enough and you know what the enemies are going to do in every situation. But, um... Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the walkthrough. Uh, the videos aren't going to come out too fast uh, because I'm going to give them a little bit of time to breathe so people can watch because we're leading up into Resident Evil 3. So that's the goal. And don't forget to check out the live streams that we do every now and then for uh, learning the strategies for each chapter. And uh, I really do hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to read this, you guys can just pause each section. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to leave a comment and like. Those help out tremendously uh, so the algorithm actually uh, reaches our videos. Love you guys. And, of course, I'll see you at the end screen. Hay un rumor hay un extraño entre nosotros. Nuestro jefe se cuidará de la reta. Si la plaga es mucho mejor que la reta. Tienes razón. <risa> <risa> the same blood as us, it seems. Nevertheless, you're an outsider. Just remember, if you become unpleasant to our eyes, you'll face severe consequences. What? Same blood? All right, ladies and gents, there you go. 100... Leon, I've been able to get some new info that might help you. Fill me in. Apparently, there's a religious cult group involved. They're called the Los Illuminados. Los Illuminados? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Anyway, I had an unexpected run-in with the big cheese of this village. But you're okay, right? Yeah. But he could have killed me, but he let me live. And he mentioned something about me carrying the same blood as them. Whatever that means. Carry the same blood. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, there are more important things than solving riddles right now. You're right. Hurry and find that church, Leon. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to Chapter 1-3, which is the final 
uh, checkpoint of this chapter one. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far. We're going to immediately, pretty much after all those cutscenes are done, we're going to go out of the house and we're going to start heading on to the next section. Here you just want to continue moving. Do not stop whatsoever. Or else the chainsaw guy will get you or you'll be hit by the Mr. Axe Thrower. Here just keep running. Uh, immediately go to the left side. Wait until you're a little bit up further, and then go right, and then dodge left quickly. And you should be able to get by everybody, and it shouldn't take you too long to figure that one out. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing kind of a wide turn here, so we're going to be making our way to the right. But do it in a, a little bit wider of an angle so that guy doesn't have a chance to hit you. Here, just try to be smart about not getting hit, and you should be able to get in here without taking any damage as well. We're going to use the key, of course, to uh, open this up. And we have a little bit of a breather. We can kind of relax a little. I always love the music in Resident Evil series. It's, it's always top notch. So here we're just going to grab whatever items that you actually can. <clears throat> and uh, one thing that I want to make a mental note of is in this chapter, snakes will be introduced. So in order to combat against those snakes, what you're going to want to do is just pretty much use your knife twice whenever you open up a box just to be safe. We're going to pick up that spindle there, and we're going to jump down. There's a few collectibles you can get up here. Now, whatever you do, um, we're going to grab every single blue medallion before we actually go and turn it in. The reason that you want to do that is if you only do the required 10, you're going to get your upgrade, or you're going to get your new pistol for free. However, you won't get a free upgrade with it. So if you do all 15, you'll get a free upgrade with it. So make sure you grab every collectible that you see here. And, of course, always use the... Um, the method of once once we get a little bit further in the chapter you're going to see that I'll start using the method of doing the double double hits uh, with a knife got something that might interest you got a selection of good things on sale stranger this is where he's going to tell you that uh, you need to collect 10. However, we're going to do all 15 before we see him again and turn it in. So here what we're going to want to do is we're going to sell anything that we have that is a high value except for the things that can go into other things. So pretty much the uh, the pearl pendant, uh, the pocket watch, and the elegant headdress. We're going to sell those. We're going to get 30,000. That specific 30,000 we're going to be using a little bit later on, uh, which is going to be in the next uh, section, which I believe is chapter 2-1. Uh, Thank you. Sell all your spindles. You should have about 16,000, depending on how many you picked Thank up. You. I picked up eight, but maybe you've picked up a little bit more. Buying? And we're going to buy attache case is in. Now, this is not a requirement. You don't Thank have you. to do this, but this is a walkthrough in its purest form. Uh, this is meant to, to help people, not meant to uh, hinder them. So, therefore, we're going to go ahead and grab it. That way, we have a bigger inventory and that we can manage items a little bit better. Here, we're going to move up just about halfway, and then we're going to go ahead and shoot the two birds' nest, one in front and one behind. This first one here uh, lets you get a hand grenade, and the second one, I believe, is some uh, rifle ammo. Now, we're going to be taking out every enemy in this area. You don't really have to if you don't want to. But there are a lot of really cool things to pick up in this area, and I, I definitely recommend uh, to stock up a little bit. All you want to do is, I was hoping she would actually fall down, which normally she does, but sometimes they don't fall down. Uh, just remember there's going to be a guy right behind you. As you can see, it took three shots to knock him down. When it, and Usually it only takes one, but sometimes it can be random. So that's why we pick up extra ammo, because you never know in those situations where you might have to take three shots instead of just the normal one that you're going to think you have to do. So we're going to be shooting the crows as well and pick up the rest of our medallions. All eight medallions are going to be in this area. The crows will just drop a few helpful, you know, money items. Not a big deal to get them at all. It's just, uh, you know, if you want them or not. And there's a third medallion straight up front here. And there's two more in this next immediate area. And then there's three more under the bridge. And then you will have all 15. This can be tough right here, especially if you don't want to take any damage. Because you got one guy that has dynamite. So my strategy for this is to really focus on the guy with dynamite. Now you might have a better strategy for this. Maybe you just throw a hand grenade or something. But 
I didn't want to waste that if I didn't have to. Usually if you hit him enough times, he'll eventually try to throw, he'll get staggered, and then he'll blow himself and others around up. You can usually do that without wasting so much ammo, but unfortunately this was how it happened on mine, so... The first of two in this uh, immediate area is going to be right here. And we're going to knock on the door so we can get a little bit of a cutscene. Hunnigan, it's Leon. The door's locked. I can't get in. Didn't they teach you how to pick locks at the academy? Yeah. There's some sort of indentation, like something might fit inside. Well, there's no use standing around. Leon, you have to find some way or something to get inside. All right, so we're going to round the corner, but we're not going to go down. We're going to go into the back of the church. There's going to be a puzzle back here as well as another medallion. But we have two enemies to take out, another dynamite enemy, so get him out as quickly as you can. Once you've done that, then you just have to worry about her. So shoot your one shot. Hopefully it takes her down, and then you can do the rest with your knife. In my case, she does drop some ammo, so it's pretty much like... Uh... Or no, wait, that's the next one. Uh, you'll get ammo plenty in this, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Here is that second one in this immediate area. And now all we need left is three. You can see how hard it can be to aim sometimes. I really like that feature in this game, that the aiming is very up and down. Kind of like it, how it is in the Splinter Cell series. So the uh, this puzzle is very simple to do. You're going to do three threes, three fours, and one three. That is going to get you the insignias. Now, if you're a, a true hardcore player and you want to learn those insignias for yourself, but I've already told you the clues, but if you want to learn how to find those out, they're all in the graveyard that you were just previously at. The ones with the big headstones, that's how you know that those are the three engravings that you actually need. And then you can figure it out from there. Now there is a little, I wouldn't say it's an Easter egg, but it's something hilarious. So if you turn around about right here and you aim up, if you shoot that bell, about five or six more enemies will come. I don't recommend it, uh, obviously, unless you just want to kill some more uh, ganados. <laughs> Again, the methods I always use here are going to be shoot once and then try to knife. Take out the enemies first before you grab the medallions. You've got one thrower and then one guy who rushes you, so I tried to get up and uh, kick him, but unfortunately, because the other guy dropped something when I killed him, it made it tough and I couldn't actually you know, grab him. So just shoot him until he's down. I mean, like I said, Handgun ammunition isn't that big of a, pr of a deal right now because we're just going to get plenty more. Right there, I did get pretty lucky not to take any damage. So, clearly, you know, maybe you could use your shotgun if you wanted to. You've got plenty of ammunition. It's up to you. Here, you're going to shoot uh, the medallions. Again, it's a little bit harder to do from further away. As you can see, it's just so much wavy around. There's going to be one there. There's going to be the second one is going to be underneath right here. And then the third one is going to be back in the opposite direction underneath. And then that is all the medallions. Now you can actually upgrade uh, to the next handgun with an additional upgrade. Meaning that uh, here's your snake. So this is where you want to do your double. That's your first snake. Uh, if, you, if you hit him again, you, you know, take away the egg. Now, you could sell the egg for money, but um, I wasn't sure how many hits I needed to do when I did this. So I actually just hit him twice, and then I hit it again, thinking that maybe it did, that you needed three. But you only need to hit the box once, and then hit the snake once. So a total of two, and that's it. Take the egg, sell it, use it if you have low health. Now, pretty much everybody knows the strategy up for this next room here. We're pretty much going to use a flash grenade that's going to destroy all of the crows at the same time. Uh, the game will give you another flash grenade, so... So, you use one, and you get another one back, so it's not like you're wasting any. Although, you could have three flash grenades now instead of just two, because you could have just shot the, the one crow that you needed to get the flash. But it's not big of a deal because we go around and actually pick up a lot of stuff. Obviously, you go around, pick up things you see along the way. 
Now, there are a few things that I missed. There's like two boxes that you could pick up when we first entered this room, but it's not a big deal. We, we, you know, my goal is not to pick up every single box I see. Just the ones that I think are going to be relevant to what we need. And of course, we'll be coming back here a little bit later for a boss fight. Now, the right side is always random, but the left side will always be that. Uh, once we go back in here, there are a few boxes we can hit. Other than that, we're going to go see the merchant, and we are going to get our brand new weapon. Make sure you also sell your original handgun as you no longer need it. And remember, if you get all 15 before you talk to him about the weapon, you will get an extra upgrade, an extra firepower on that handgun. If you do 10 and then you talk to him and then you get the other five, you will not get that upgrade. So you need to make sure that you do not see the merchant until you have got all 15. Stranger. So we're going to go to the buy screen what and we're going to buy the Punisher. Now, as you see, Punisher firepower is level two instead of level one. It will be level one if you only do 10. So just place it anywhere in here because we're going to sell our handgun and then just put it back over there. So you could sell it <laughs> first you. if you want. It's up to you. What are you selling? Make sure you're selling the right handgun, of course. And it's that not that it's not that much. It's only 3950 <laughs> But you have some spindles that you can uh, that get rid of here strange? for a few extra thousand. Thank now, you. this green cat's eye can actually go into the beer stein. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it in there. I don't know if I'm going to get the other two, but obviously the more you mix into the beer stein, the more money you will receive for it. All right, that's it for this section here. We're going to go ahead and move on. Next section is fairly easy to do. Uh, you won't really have to worry too much about enemies. We do have a boulder that we're going to need to dodge here, just like we did in uh, the previous chapter 1-1, one I believe it was. Again, from this point on, I'm on a, I'm going to always kind of be weary if I if I see that second snake to make sure you uh, melee twice. Now there's obviously a few things that you can get in this area, but there's also a lot of traps that you need to avoid and it's just it wastes a lot of ammo and there's a lot of things you just don't need to worry about so go ahead and grab this grenade here and then we're going to shoot the dynamite if you do that it should take out the gun just do it before he gets a chance to hit you do the same thing here and uh, stick to the left side that way you can avoid both of these guys and then just move on to the uh, final section of this chapter and we have a little bit of a boss fight. So I'm going to teach you how to get around that boss fight without taking any damage. Um, there's speed routes that you can do. What I'm doing is not really a speed route method. It's more of a just making sure you get through it clean uh, without uh, taking any damage. All right, so once you saw what, what is awaiting you, obviously, uh, Leon is a little afraid to go forward. We're going to go ahead and pick up this red herb. I like to make sure that I have my herbs mixed because if you mix all three of the ingredients, you will be able to get a kind of like a level up. 
more max health. Even though we've not taken any damage up to this point. Uh, there's going to be a point where it's going to be very, very tough not to take damage. Again, I'm going to make up my goal. But make sure you hit that right there and you can uh, pick that up. And then obviously pick up everything else in this area before we move on. Take the yellow herb and go ahead and do some mixing. As you can see, we can mix that yellow. So now we have two yellows, so two potential level ups whenever we need. But we don't want to use it until we've actually taken damage. So that's why you still see them in there. We're going to go ahead and save here, even though I didn't need to because I complete this a uh, first time go. But it's always better to save here, uh, especially if you don't want to have uh, death on your screen. You don't have to because you'll just start right back here. But all the things that you've picked up, you'll have to re-pick up again and whatnot. So if you just save right here, then you're pretty much golden. You're good to go. So save there just to make things a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Now, if you actually shoot the water about four or five times... Uh, you'll get a little Easter egg surprise. Uh, however, I'm not going to do that. So do that at your own risk. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and uh, start this boss fight. Uh, it's very easy to do. I mean, uh, you shouldn't take any damage if you just follow exactly what I do. You know, there should be no times you take damage. But it can be a little bit random. It can be a little random. So let's do it. Okay, first off, make sure you use the D-pad when you're aiming. So you're going to hold down left trigger and use the D-pad. You're going to hit him once, immediately move to the right, and then you should uh, avoid anything. Immediately move to the right here once he goes down. Sometimes he will go to the right. If he does, just restart the checkpoint and just make sure he always goes left. Here, you can get one hit in, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to bypass both of those. That way, we make sure that we don't take any damage. Here, always go to the right again. Sometimes, again, sometimes he will go to the left, but mostly he goes to the left. You can get about three hits here if you're quick enough. And again, I always use the D-pad when I'm aiming down. But you do have to actually aim with your left trigger, or depending on how you set your aiming mode. Here, same thing. Get a few hits, but don't be like me where you miss the first shot. So you could have got three there instead of just two. Uh, again, it's random depending on if he'll actually go down like this or if he'll do what he did last time. That I can't help you with because it is random. Always aim a little bit high for your first shot. And then you can aim on him for the second. Now you might be able to get three in here. And then he'll do his little turnaround and then you just start back on him. So again, he's going to do his little turn, go to the right and get you a few more hits. And that should be it. Hopefully you've completed it. Gonna be a quick time scene here. Follow the prompts and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. It has been my pleasure to bring chapter one to you all. Chapter one is complete, and now we can finally move on to chapter two. Don't forget to
Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Anyway, I started to feel dizzy, and then I guess I must have lost consciousness. Lost consciousness? Maybe that has some connection to what the village chief was talking about. Hmm. Can't say. But I'm all right now. I'm gonna continue my mission. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to Chapter 2-1. It is time to continue on with our Resident Evil 4 professional walkthrough. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying so far. First things first is uh, we just finished the bite, or should I say the uh, the boss fight, with uh, El Largo, or Del Largo. I, well, I'm not even, I can't remember what his name was, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys are ready to continue on. Something that you might not know is that uh, you can actually head out of here. If you turn around and go in the back side of the house, you will see the boat. You can take that boat and you can head over to a merchant. Now, if you go to this merchant, there is a reason to go than just to obviously sell or buy things. As there are a few extra items that you can pick up along this route as well. Uh, there's like, I wouldn't call it a puzzle, but there's a few boxes that you can move around in order to be able to do that. So we're going to go in here and uh, we're going to do just that. So I thought that was a little cool nod. Uh, again, this is all optional. It's not like you have to do this. So it's up to you, but uh, we want to make sure that we're dressed up for success uh, so that for later on in the game, we're going to have enough money to get the items that we need in order to make the boss fights uh, go a little bit easier, but at the same time still remain challenging. But uh, definitely show you some cool strategies on beating them quickly rather than taking, uh, obviously, too much time. So, otherwise, this chapter here, chapter 2-1, would be a very, very short chapter as there's really not a lot going on. There's just a few sections that you actually really have to go through. And in those sections, you can pretty much get around all of the enemies within seconds. So... This, at least, gives a little bit more meat to the gameplay, and it allows you to pick up that uh, green cat's eye there, which you can put into your elegant mask. Not the beer stein, but it actually goes into your elegant mas mask. Now, if you drop down here, you can pick up some more rifle ammo, obviously, and you can talk to the guy or climb back up. And the only time I ever see the merchant is when I want to usually sell stuff, masks. although we are going to be picking up a rocket launcher uh, on the next merchant, which we'll see him in just... Uh, a little while. Sorry, it's not the cat's eye, it's the green gem that we just picked up. And the rest of the things we're going to sell off to make I'll as much money as we can. Buying price. rocket launchers costs 30000 so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of money in order to be able to use that uh, wisely. There are going to be a few times in this walkthrough we're going to be buying rocket launcher to make the boss fights go a little bit quicker. Uh, and I think it's it's pretty cool that you can do that because you can always spend the money the way you want So instead of us spending all of the money that we get on buying upgrades and whatnot We don't really need to do that as we can focus on the things that make the boss battles just a little bit quicker So we're gonna head back to pretty much right where we started and then we're gonna head up to the next room Now I'm gonna go ahead and start to kind of pre-explain the next room because it's not a difficult room But there are a few things that I need to explain to you all first off being that you're going to start dealing with a new type of enemy, which are the uh, the Plogus. So what happens is when you shoot someone in the head, but I will tell you this, sometimes the Plogus can come out when you just kill an enemy. So it doesn't 100% matter if you shoot them in the head or not. It still can happen even when you shoot them in the leg or knife them or whatever. The Plogus can still come out. So the biggest thing to combat the Plogus is going to be flash grenades, but... Um, there's also other ways to combat them, and I'm going to show you right here. Oh, 
And uh, as you can see, that is the easiest way to combat the uh, the Plogus is to run right by. Now, if you do take out the Plogus, you usually get, I think, uh, a lot more money than you would taking out like a normal enemy. So again, if you're die hard and you want to take him out, just throw a flash grenade at him and boom, he's done. Just one flash grenade takes out any uh, Plogus. I mean, it, it, very simple. So first thing we did was uh, we went and got picked up that grenade, I think it was. And then we're going to go to the right side of this rope and then we're going to shoot down these boxes with our pistol. The reason I chose the hand or the uh, grenade in order to run around is you run a little bit faster when you only have a hand grenade or an egg or a rocket launcher in your hand as those items allow you to um, run faster. Even a rocket launcher which is very confusing. So we're going to take out this guy. You don't have to. I mean, you can leave him right there. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the spindles and some more handgun ammunition up where he was. Now, again, this is all optional. You can get by this without doing it. It's just that uh, in some screens, I am going to show you taking out some enemies. And in others, we're just going to be going right by everybody. So it's kind of a mixture of both. A little bit of speed running and a little bit of slow enjoying the game. As I don't want this to be a complete speed running walkthrough because I feel like you know you watch it and then it's over. I want you guys to sit back and relax and enjoy the environment, the music, the sound, and everything that uh, they went into creating this. You can see we just picked up another collectible there, so you can actually pick it up now instead of doing it whenever the enemies are going to be coming through this area, which is obviously a lot smarter. So my biggest problem that I'm going to have, um, especially in the next chapter, because I've already finished this chapter. And I did stream it, so if you guys want to see how we went and did every single level that you're going to see over the next few days, all in Chapter 2, you can uh, easily watch that stream. It's labeled Chapter 2 Strats, and that way you know exactly how I go about and uh, figure these levels out and whatnot. So there will be a checkpoint up here, uh, which is good because you will need it, because sometimes you got to be super quick when doing this next part. Alright, so what that's going to do is it's going to make it to where you can actually go to the next section. So here you want to be quick. Now, as soon as you jump the third one, there's one, two, and here, you want to immediately do a quick turn to the left. You can see my body is slightly turning to the left there. That way you're facing this way. You want to go straight, wait for these two right here, and try to get around him. It's a, they do different things sometimes, but I think you'll be able to get it. It might take you a few tries, but you can get by those guys uh, relatively easy. Here, they are falling behind you, but at this point, you don't have to worry about them anymore. I've obtained an object that resembles a cult group's insignia. Wonderful, Leon. Head back to the church. Ashley's safety is our immediate priority. But at this point, they are chasing you, so make sure you continually move forward, and you should be good to go. Up in this next section, if you knife this here, you're going to drop another spindle. Now, I had a little bit of a problem with the game right here for some reason. It kind of froze on me a little bit, but uh, I don't think it did too much of a problem. All of this was done while sim simultaneously live streaming. So it does take a toll on your computer, and hopefully everything turns out to be, you know, still smooth and good quality for you guys. Because I am recording in 4K while I am streaming in 1080. And obviously only a good computer is going to be able to do that. So here we've got a boss fight coming up, but we're going to go ahead and go to the merchant and pick up our rocket launcher. Also, before we do that, we need to make sure that we set ourselves up for success, success and have enough room for the rocket launcher. Now, you notice that I have so many health items, and yet I've, I still have not taken any damage in this entire walkthrough. And I continue to save all of my triple got a selection herbs. Of good so I've still got, sales, I've got like, I think a total of now four green red and yellow quiet. herbs which will max my health up eventually i'm going to use those Stranger. but i'm going to go as long as i can without doing any of that stuff because i want to see how long i can go without doing any upgrades <laughs> without doing Thank any you. what are you selling? without taking any damage as well so we've got uh, you know the rocket launcher and you can see we're going to sell some more spindles 
And eventually we're going to get rid of a few herbs, but that's going to be a little bit later in the next chapter, or should I say in the final chapter? The final section of chapter two. So I guess there's checkpoints. You got 2-1, 2-2, and 2-3. So each one of those has like um, checkpoints inside chapter two. So this is chapter 2-1, and then we've got two and then three. Now that we're good to go, we're going to go ahead and equip our rocket launcher, and I'm going to show you how to defeat this boss battle, El Gigante, in about uh, 0 0.3 seconds. And it's as simple as holding LT and RT on your controller. Immediately, as soon as the uh, cutscene starts, just hold that down, and as soon as it ends, you're good to go. Now, if you skip the cutscene, just continue to hold it down and then hit uh, uh, select to skip the cutscene, and then it's the same thing. So just make sure that when you do this, what I'm about to do is you have it held down before the cutscene ends. All right, and then you should be good to go. And there you have it. Again, make sure you hold them down before you finish the cutscene. If you do not, then he'll take longer to shoot it, and then you'll actually take damage as well as kill him. So obviously you want to avoid the splash damage, and the only way to avoid the splash damage is if you already have it held down before the cutscene even ends. Other than that, if you don't care about that, quickly turn around, get away from him, shoot the rockets, and then you shouldn't take any damage. But that's the easiest way to do it, the way that I just showed you right there. Hold it down before the end of the cutscene, and then go. And that means hold down your view, or your aim, and hold down the trigger. And uh, go ahead and pick up everything else that you see around here. Now, we are going to come into some problems with inventory management uh, here in the next few chapters, just because we have so many health items and we haven't used any. So it might come to a point where I will actually just use... Uh, a few of my herbs, even though I haven't taken any damage, and that is just to increase my max health. Um, I haven't decided on that yet, but we are going to be buying the large attache case coming up in Chapter 3. So, you know, it might not be too much of a problem, but, I mean, you see what we have right now. We have already have three full healths. Um, max, or should I say max XP healths, and then we have a first aid and then uh, a few two greens, so and we're going to be getting even more. It's just crazy how much health items they actually do give you. This section is quite easy. I mean, you should never get hit. The only reason you should ever get hit in this section is because you ran directly into a dog. As long as you don't run directly into the dog, you will never get hit. As soon as you see them, immediately run a little to the right or left, and then that's it. Very easy to do. Don't let them scare you. They can be quite intimidating when their Plagas comes out. So, other than that, should be pretty easy to go. Get right into the... Uh, right there, kind of hesitated. So, don't hesitate like I did. Um, you should be able to make it in there just fine. Grab a few items that are around the church. Uh, at this point, we are already pretty much done with 
this chapter. We have a few cutscenes left. We have a puzzle. Uh, but no more enemies that we're going to have to take out in this entire chapter. Uh, or this uh, section, this checkpoint. 2-1. Once we uh, go upstairs, we are also going to go ahead and pick up an incendiary grenade. This grenade is important. However, you'll get another one up ahead. So if you don't pick up this one, then you at least need to make sure that you pick up the other one. I do pick up this one, so I, therefore I do not pick up the next one. And that's also because I didn't have enough room to pick up the next one. Because once we get through, uh, obviously, you know, chapter 2-2, we have the cabin, which is super, super tough. And you'll see that uh, you're going you're gonna to pick up another incendiary grenade in the cabin and then another one when you fight against another El Gigante. Puzzle-wise, this is a pretty simple puzzle. All you're going to want to do is go 2, 3, 1. So right, or red is 2. Then green is 3. And then blue is 1. And that's it. Now we're going to go say hello to our little friend. Um, and uh, let's say the game is going to change a lot from this point, so... And I'm sure you guys know exactly why. Enjoy. Ashley. Don't come! Hey, take it easy. No! Get away! Calm down. Everything's going to be just fine. My name's Leon. I'm under the President's order to rescue you. What? My father? That's right. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. It's Leon. I've succeeded in extricating my subject. Good work, Leon. I'll send a chopper over right away. Where's the extraction point? There's another trail that you can take to get out of the village. The chopper will pick you up beyond there. Got it. I'm on my way. All right, so uh, we're going to be using RB a lot. Remember, we're playing on an Xbox One X Series 2 controller, and using RB is what you will to wait and follow. Obviously, pick up everything here that you want. Again, if you don't want to pick things up, you don't have to. Just continually run out and do the same strategies that you see me do. I just decided to slow down and grab as many things as I can because I love to explore and I love what the game offers with uh, item management and stuff like that. I think it's a really fun meta game to play inside the game. But if I was going for a straight up speed run, obviously I wouldn't pick any of this stuff up. So if you have Ashley wait, wait, uh, Follow me. you won't have to, you know, pick her up or anything like that. Um, but obviously we don't really care too much about that stuff. So we'll go ahead and catch her. Le uh, Leon's a nice guy. I'll take the girl. Who are you? If you must know, my name is Osman Sadler, the master of this fine religious community. What do you want? To demonstrate to the whole world our astounding power, of course. No longer will the United States think they can police the world forever. So, we kidnap the president's daughter in order to give her our power. And then, send her back. No! Leon, I think they shot something in my neck. What did you do to her? We just planted her a little gift. Oh, there's going to be one hell of a party when she returns home to her loving father. <laughs> But, before that, I thought I might bargain with the President for some donation. Believe it or not, it takes quite a lot of money to keep this church up and running. Faith in money will lead you nowhere, Sadler. Oh, I believe I forgot to tell you that we gave you the same gift when I was unconscious. Oh, I truly hope you like our small but special contributions. When the eggs hatch, you will become my puppets. Involuntarily, 
you'll do as I say. I'll have total control over your minds. Don't you think this is a revolutionary way to promulgate one's faith? Sounds more like an alien invasion if you ask me. Don't worry. We got into this mess. We can get out of it. Uh. All right, ladies and what's up, ladies and gents? I'm your host, Nintendo Channel One, and welcome back to the next chapter for Resident Evil Four Professional Walkthrough. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Let's get going. This is going to be an easy part here. Leon, shoot those barrels on that wagon. Just immediately go to the right. Don't listen to what she says, and you should be able to get by there. I've actually never taken any damage from going past those guys. Very easy to do and you don't really have to worry too much. And you see that I'm running without a weapon. All that means is that you're able to go into the next sections a little bit quicker. Um, when you run without uh, anything equipped or when you run with particularly um, something small like uh, a rocket launcher. I know that's hard to believe. But also a grenade of some sort allows you to run slightly faster so if you're wanting to get you know a little bit maybe faster times that's going to be your best method for doing so this is going to be a very short chapter because i found an optimal uh strategy in order to uh defeat the cabin which um, i think it will take a few times but the, as you all know the cabin is very tough but once you get the hang of it if you do exactly what i do and what pretty much everyone does when they want to get by the cabin in a very quick manner here you're going to stay to the right side so that you don't trip any of the uh, booby traps and then go to the left. Now sometimes this guy will swing, sometimes he won't, so sometimes you'll have to try to dodge him a little bit, but as you can see, most of the time you're going to be able to get around him. Here do exactly what I do. Climb at this point right here. Go straight forward until you can see an enemy through that door. Then slowly move around here. As soon as he's jumping through, tell Ashley to wait and then come back. And then you should be able to make it through without her taking any damage or without her actually being grabbed. Wait until she catches up with you. Go to the right side, stick to the right wall. You should be able to avoid these axes and then jump down all the way on the right side and then make sure you catch her. Here, this guy sometimes will sing at you, sometimes he won't. So just, uh, you know, um, at this point you should be thorough enough to know exactly when to dodge and when not to dodge. And uh, stick to the left side there so that you can avoid all of the traps. Next up is one of the hardest parts of the game. So hopefully you guys are ready for some awesome strategy stuff. And I'll try to explain it as I'm actually going through it because it is quite difficult to explain. So hopefully I'll be able to do it justice. But uh, make sure you have your handgun equipped and we're going to be ready to go. Leon, I have some bad news. I'd rather not hear it. Well, I'm afraid I have to tell you anyway. We've lost contact with the chopper. Someone must have shot it down, though we can't determine who. Great. We're prepping another chopper for you. Meanwhile, I want you to head towards the extraction point. Got it. What are we gonna do, Leon? I hate to say it, but we're sandwiched, all right. Quick! In that cabin! Leon! Small world, eh? Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! And I don't believe there's any relevance with my figure and my standing. Who are you? Oh, oh, excuse me, your highness. Perhaps the young lady might want to introduce herself first before asking someone his name. Her name's Ashley Graham, the president's daughter. Is she... well, you know... Don't worry. She's cool. Eh, never mind. There's supposed to be some kind of obvious symptom before you turn into one of them anyway. <gasps> Look! Ashley, upstairs! All right, so the first thing you want to do is try to hit Luis and the window at the same time. Grab the shotgun shells and remove 
the wood. Let him shoot five times and then try to uh, aim at him. That way he doesn't shoot anymore. What you want is uh, preferably someone to grab him. Once they do, then you can go to this corner. Once they grab him, enemies are less... Uh, they, they don't come after you as much. Get your hand grenade out, throw it underneath the table, and you should be good to go. Wait about three seconds and then throw a grenade into there. You're going to kill about three enemies. Go up here. We need to grab one more grenade in order to make all of this work. Go back down. Now, the whole thing is to let Luis shoot a few times, but as soon as you get back down, try not to let him shoot anymore. Usually here you want to swipe him, but actually there was an axe. Someone damaged him enough for us. So throw your same tactic just in the left side. Go over to the right window this time and throw a grenade. Wait a few seconds. And now we just have the waiting game, and we're going to be waiting at the stairs with our shotgun. And at this point, you've pretty much done all of the hard part. Now all you want to do is defend this stairwell. So in order to do that, uh, the, the biggest concern that can happen here is reloading. So if you see an opportunity, take it to reload. Don't hesitate. If you hesitate and then you reload too late, during this animation, uh, obviously you can be hit. And we don't want that. We're trying to go for uh, no damage as far as we can go throughout the game. Once you get these guys, make sure you keep them far away from you as much as you can, as they will take you out in one hit. So you don't want the Plagueis to be right up on you if you can help it. Also, if you do take the, the Plagueis out, that means more can spawn. Only two can spawn at one time, so be careful for that. As you can see here, when you take one out, more will just continue to spawn. And uh, just be careful. As you can see, they'll rush and they'll get up there very, very quickly. So if you do exactly what I do, you are going to have no trouble whatsoever. They will just come running in to get killed. You've got plenty of shotgun shells because of all that we've hoarded throughout this entire um, village chapter. And that's it, ladies and gents. Looks like they're backing off. So, what do we do now? The bridge I crossed to get here is out, so I guess we have no choice but to keep moving. I forgot something. You guys go on ahead. Lewis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Chapter 2-3, and of course I will see you next time on Chapter... Or should I say Chapter 2-2, I'll see you next Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Industrator 1, to Chapter 2-3, the final checkpoint of Chapter 2, which means the village is almost over. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, or are enjoying the walkthrough so far. Make sure you turn all notifications on. It is very important to make sure you are up to date on when live streams happening, as well as when new videos are released. And I really do hope you're enjoying the walkthrough. So we're just going to go around and pick up everything that we can here. As you can see, uh, we've got still plenty of things left. We're actually getting quite full. So we need to do a little bit of management, and we are going to start doing some of that management in the next chapter. But right now, we just need to make a little bit of space for uh, a few things that are going to happen in this video. We have a boss fight coming up, so we're just going to make a little bit of space, kind of move things around a little bit. At some point, you always need to do a little bit of maintenance, unless you're just going with a very minimal uh, setup. Uh, but if you have collected things over time, you're going to want to do a little maintenance every now and then just to make sure that uh, when things come in, you know what's going on and you're not too overwhelmed. Uh, here, there's not going to be anything else we're going to be really picking up outside, just a few things here and there. Obviously, some money and some TMP ammo. And I know you might be thinking, why am I picking up all this TMP ammo or why have I picked up Rifle ammo, well that's because uh, we're going to be using it in the next chapter. So you want to make sure that you click right here. There are two different directions you can go in. Uh, the left direction has you fight against two chainsaw females and a bunch of villagers. However, the right section allows you to face off against one El Gigante. And it's very easy. And you can Follow. usually get by this El Gigante in less than, you know, maybe 15 seconds. So uh, go ahead and head straight forward, and the cutscene will begin. Leon! Immediately turn around, and we're going to take out the chains. If you aim a little higher, sometimes you can get two and one. 
You're going to tell Ashley to wait now. If you do so, it's going to change El Gigante's pattern, and he'll do a slower hit coming through, which will give you a little bit more extra time. Here, as you can see, uh, we need to do a little bit of maintenance, so we're going to go ahead and actually just take out uh, that. Now, another thing we could have done is actually mix it in with the other two greens, so we have three green, but it's not a big deal, as I said. We're going to tell her to follow us again. We're going to grab the old key, and we should have plenty of time to get to the next section without El Gigante uh, messing with us. Very easy to get through. I mean, you're going to be able to do this on your first time, most likely. As long as you tell Ashley to wait exactly when you saw me, then you should have no problems getting through uh, without even worrying. Go ahead and use the key. In this section here, there is a merchant to the left, so if you want, you can sell a few items, whatever. But we don't need to just yet, as we're going to do all of our selling and see our merchant in the beginning of the next chapter, which a lot of stuff is coming up in Chapter 3, so you're definitely going to want to make sure you take a look at that, as Chapter 3 is the castle, so therefore, it's going to be tough. So I can't wait to uh, tackle that with you guys. Here we've got a little bit of marksman shooting. Now, if you had a rifle, obviously you could use a rifle, but why waste a rifle when you don't need to? Now, wait. notice how, um, depending on how you look or what you do with Ashley, she will change things. So if you tell her to wait, it'll zoom in. If you tell her not to wait, it'll zoom out, and then she'll give you a little fist bump. But I recommend that you just have... I just wanted to show off the fist bump because I think it's, it's, it's hilarious. So tell her to wait. That way you have a more zoomed-in shot. I mean, it's already hard enough as it is to aim in this game. So do your best, and uh, it doesn't matter if you waste ammo or not because um, you've got so much ammo and you're not really going to be using it uh, anymore, so... One more guy to take out here. You can barely see him there. It can be a little tough to shoot. Once you've done that, then that's all of the wait, technical, follow, like, wait. you know, cannon fodder enemies you're really going to be taking out, except for the truck in the final section. So what we have next is a boss fight. So I'm going to go ahead and explain the boss fight before we even get there. At this point, we're just going to make our way to the boss fight. Uh, it's just a beeline straight there. Wait. So once you do get there, I mean, you could do it now or you could do it later. It's up to you. You're going to want to go ahead and equip your incendiary grenade. That's why I've been picking those things up. Uh, you should have, if you've done everything that I've done, you should have a total of four, with a possibility of having five, depending on if you shot the um, the bird's nest uh, right in front of the church. Uh, but I didn't do that because we didn't need to have it. I mean, we already have plenty enough. You're going to get one more inside here. So it's going to take a total of four incendiary grenades on the uh, 60 frames per second edition. And uh, the, four, the fourth one that you throw is going to be a mixed combination between incendiary and you're going to blow up the canister. So do exactly what I do when you see it. Uh, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just follow what I do to a T. You better stay outside. Ashley, go hide. Yeah.
as you can see, that boss fight just goes super, super quick. So it's really as soon as the cutscene ends, you already want to be holding down LT and RT, and it'll automatically throw the first one. Immediately go to the right. Make sure you stay uh, to the right far enough so that you don't actually get damage from the fire. As soon as you turn around, grab the second incendiary grenade, uh, then do a quick uh, 180, and then throw it again right at his feet. After that, there'll be another cinema. As soon as that cinema is done, you already should be holding LT and RT to throw the next one. And then you want to go all the way back in the corner, wait until his head part actually comes down. Once that happens, make sure that you're aiming in between him and the barrel, and then that's it. Fairly easy to do, and you shouldn't have any problems with that boss fight. Now there is going to be uh, another green okay herb that we're going to pick up at the beginning of Chapter 3, which we can mix with that to give ourselves a total of five upgrades already in our health. So we haven't even used them. At some point, I'm going to. I'm just waiting until we take our first damage. And then once I actually take my first damage, then I'm going to start using them, and then we'll get our health all the way up to max uh, for better. Because I don't expect us to get through this entire walkthrough without taking any damage. I mean, I'm obviously going to try, but I can't say that it's going to happen because it's only going to get tougher from here. There were a lot of tough parts in the village section, but let me tell you, Castle is no joke, so it's going to be completely tough, especially going up against some of the flying creatures. Uh, it's going to be really tough not to take just random damage. So that's why you want to make sure you have yourself plenty of flash grenades for those enemies, and you're going to have plenty of health. So here we're just going to be running all the way to that uh, first section when we came and entered, and we're going to be using the eye to open the door. Um, but there you go. I mean, this is pretty much only one more section in the village area and then that is it we are completely done with chapter two so we finished both chapter one and two and then we're going to be moving on to chapter three so again the uh, the videos will come out after the live streams i'll do the live streams for the chapter then i'll take that create the videos for it and then we can continue on from there so you guys can expect i'm a, my goal is to have a video every single day uh for resident evil 4 uh that's my goal and hopefully i'll be able to stick to it But here, you're going to want to move forward until you trigger the cutscene. Once you do that, go back. You can either go for a headshot or you can just shoot the truck five times. But uh, you can probably get a headshot like this. Pretty easy to do. Wait here because there is going to be a lot of money that you can pick up right there. And then you're good to go. There's going to be a lot of enemies that spawn in behind you, so you're just going to run up. But I feel like, you know what? I think we're done with Ashley. We're just going to leave her behind here. So uh, this is where we decided that we're going to just save ourselves and let her get caught, you know? Aw, oh, crap. On the other side of the bridge. Yeah. You take that one. Okay. Ready? What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrina 1, your host, and welcome to Chapter 3-1 for our professional walkthrough for Resident Evil 4. Hopefully you guys are enjoying so far. This chapter is definitely one of the toughest chapters in the game, so there's going to be a lot of strategies that I'm going to show you here, and it is going to take you quite a bit of time to learn everything, but hopefully you'll be able to get through it without too much problem. There is going to be a snake uh, on this last one right here. So make sure that you uh, swipe twice. That snake is always there. So you can grab a chicken egg. For some reason, he's got a chicken egg in him. I guess he loves chickens. But grab some gold. Get everything that you can around here. We're going to be changing our inventory up quite a bit. We're going to be getting rid of our weapon. A uh, few of our weapons, actually. Getting rid of our shotgun and getting rid of our handgun. And we're going to replace them with a TMP, a riot gun... 
and a rifle uh, semi, which is the better rifle because it allows you to shoot a little quicker. So, uh, yeah, so lots of stuff to do here. I am going to skip through a little bit of re uh, organization. Got some rare things on sale, stranger. As you guys what don't need to see silly? all that, just make sure that you're doing a little bit of organizing when you're inside uh, your, Is that all your actual attache case. Thank don't forget you. to buy the large attache case, which is going to help you be able to carry more things around, of course. And we're going to be selling our Punisher, our shotgun, and any Thank handgun you. ammo. As We're not going to be really using the handgun anymore as the Thank TMP pretty much does that everything that you need it to do. Thank Sell a few you. herbs and things like that that we don't need anymore. This is where in the walkthrough we're still going to... We're going to start using our health items Thank just to get our max health up. Even though we're still not going to be taking any damage per se... We're at least going to start getting our health up. That way we won't get one shot killed in certain situations if we do take damage, you know, later on in Chapter 4 or 5. So, uh, like I said here, we're going to skip everything and go straight for the rifle, semi-auto, the TMP, and the riot gun. Those are going to be the weapons that we get. And then if you've done it like I've done it, then you'll have uh, the proper spacing and area for you to be able to put everything exactly where you need them. Thank you. So how can I explain a lot of the sections coming up? It's going to be a lot of hit and miss. It's going to be a lot of, you know, just making sure you're doing the best that you can, restarting those checkpoints and making sure that you get exactly what you're looking for. Now, I, every single room that you see is going to be my version of perfect. Uh, that way you guys can actually see how it should look in some ways, but there are instances where everything won't go according to your plan. So if that does happen, it's okay to improvise a little. Uh, as you should be able to maintain. Also, don't forget to pick up the TMP stock as it's going to make your aiming a little bit more smooth when going through the rest of these <laughs> sections. You. And that is pretty much it. Uh, there's nothing else that we actually need to pick up. We don't use, we're not using the rocket launcher just yet. Come so back any time. At this point, we're going to go ahead and you can get out your TMP if you want, but go ahead and combine, and combine it. That way you can actually use the stock. Although what we're going to be needing to use is the rifle up next. And at this point, we can go ahead and start moving on. Follow me. There's going to be one enemy that you want to take out during this section. There's actually only one guy to take out. And I'm going to show you exactly which one it is right up here. So as soon as you get behind this box, take the ammo, and we're going to aim very, very high and take this guy out. You got plenty of time to make the shot, so don't worry too much. And then we're going to go ahead and go. Switch back to your TMP because uh, you just you don't want to run around with your rifle. Here's going to be a cutscene. You can risk it if you want, but don't move forward unless you skip the cutscene. I died actually three times here just because uh, until I was able to to realize that just wait, just wait till they go and then go. Here, step back a little bit. You'll get staggered sometimes or not. It just depends. But just keep moving forward and then go to the left. You're going to tell Ashley to wait at the top of these stairs. There is a reason so that Ashley actually gets caught. This takes the enemies away from you. So you have enough time to rotate this and then complete it. Once you actually fire the cannon, all enemies will disappear and Ashley will be fine. And as you can see, they're already gone. They're not even on the screen anymore. And that's it. I mean, you've done this section perfect, Wait. and you should be good to go. Again, this was the only time that I actually died. Just because I was trying to get into um, into this area quick enough before the boulders would hit me. And so I recommend you just waiting. Unless you're really going for that speed run, you have to skip the cutscene. If you don't skip that last cutscene there before you start heading into the boulder section then you're not going to make it. And I died three times before I realized that. So, But like I said, you're not going to see any of those deaths, and they don't count towards the overall walkthrough. Uh, you should, still should be able to get through everything with you know no problem. Leave Ashley where she is. We can come back down here and pick up a few items. One is going to be inside the fountain that was blown up at the beginning. Spindle there. And there's going to be a few items that you can pick up on the bottom left here. Again, these are not necessity items. It's just, it's not a bad idea to have as much money as you can. 
And it just depends on what type of playthrough you're going for. I mean, if you're going for a speed run, obviously you don't need any of this stuff. Obviously we're not picking up any handgun either, so make sure if you do, if you do follow my route to not pick any handgun ammo up. And for some reason, the game loves to give me handgun ammo even when I don't have a pistol. Follow me. So we're going to see the merchant again right here and sell Welcome. off uh, pretty much what we just got, a few spindles and whatnot. Got some rare things on... What are you selling? I always like to see him every chance that I get. It just makes, is that all makes it more comfortable it for me to know that I'm going you. into the next section prepared. And you got the velvet blues that you can sell as well. <laughs> then come back at any time. This next room is uh, can be a little tough. Leon, where's your current location? We decided to lay low in a castle, but it looks like it was a bad move. Meaning? Well, it appears that this castle's also connected with the Los Illuminados. They must not get many visitors here, because they're giving me one hell of a welcome. Sounds bad. I have an idea, Leon. I need you to... What? Repeat, Hunnigan. Great. Just my luck. As soon as you take control, wait. tell Ashley to wait and move upstairs. Grab this gold sword. Immediately turn around and head down. Don't do anything else and then go back outside the room. You have to do everything in this order or else guys will come out and they'll... There'll be like five, six guards on you. Just like all the way. So go ahead and uh, now exchange these two swords. So grab that one and then put the gold one here. This pretty much resets the room once you go outside, so down here you're fine. It's just once you get up there is when guards will spawn, and then you're just moving forward, so then you don't have to worry too much about them at all anymore. And then we have a cutscene coming up with our favorite hero, Luis, so enjoy. Leon! Luis, I've got something for you guys. Uh, what? Oh, shit! I must have dropped it when I was running away from them. Dropped what? A drug that'll stop your convulsions. Look, I know you're carriers. You've been coughing up blood, right? Yeah. And you? Yes. Damn it! The eggs have hatched. We don't have much time. What are you talking about? I have to go back and get it. Let me come with you. No. You stay here with Leon. He is better with the ladies. I'm sure. Why are you... It makes me feel better. Let's just leave it at that. Alright, once you take over, we're gonna move up. As soon as you get to the door and past it, tell wait. Ashley to wait. And then move forward. There's gonna be two shield guys here. Bait them, go forward. This is all done very, very quickly. Do not hesitate and do not slow down. We're gonna grab the key that gets us into the next area. Immediately when we turn around, go down and shoot this barrel. If you've done everything correctly, you should have enough room to move around those guys. If not, restart the checkpoint and do it again. And if done correctly, you sh they, they are on your tail, but you should be able to go ahead and call Ashley back to you, and you can get to the next section. We're going to have a little bit of cutscene up ahead, and we're going to meet a new antagonist, and I think you're going to enjoy him. to wonder when you might notice us. Who are you? Me llamo Ramon Salazar, the eighth castellan of this magnificent architecture. I have been honored with the prodigious power from the great Lord Sadler. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. My, my, we've got a feisty one. If you care for your own well-being, I suggest you surrender yourself and simply become our hostage. Or, Mr. Scott, you can give us the girl because you're not worth a penny, I'm afraid. You can die. I'm never turning into one of them. Never. Got that right. We'll find a cure. All right, once done so... You're going to look up, but you got to wait till you go up the stairs first. 
You'll have a little bit of a cutscene here that you can skip that just tells you that, hey, you got to get these two things before you can move forward. So go up and then you'll see that right there. Go ahead and grab it. This is a very important item to get because you can add it to your elegant mask. And then grab whatever collectibles you need. I always tell Ashley just to wait just in case that uh, she gets in my way. She gets in the way a lot sometimes, especially when you're trying to do specific things. So it's always good to make her wait when you know you're in a safe room. Also, we're going to go ahead and save in this room. I mean, if you plan on playing it in one session, uh, it's not that big of a deal to save. But um, this just keeps you from having to go through all of the stuff you've already went through if you know that you might get disconnected from the game or whatnot, as these Wait. next two sections are some of the toughest in the game. There is some gold behind uh, Salazar's uh, picture. 5,000 pitas. Grab anything that you can get. Always tell Ashley just to wait. Again, I'm not picking up any hand gun ammo. Now, there's a few strategies for this next boss that we're going to go up against. Um, and the only thing that I can tell you is that just take your time. It's, it's no rush. Unless you're really wanting to go for a speed run, then you're not going to really follow this strat. But this is all about making sure that you're not going to get hit and that you're safe, right? So it's not a fast strat per se, but it's also a lot quicker than maybe some other strategies out there that keep you safe. So we're going to tell Ashley to wait here at the door. There's a cinnamon grenade that you can pick up there that's always there. The other one is random. Wait. Yep, yeah, tell her to wait up here just so she doesn't get in the way. And then we're going to switch to our rifle. We're going to take him out first before we do anything else in the room. How we take them out is pretty simple. Immediately, as soon as you go inside a little bit, go ahead and start aiming. Got to move up. There we go. Hit him immediately. Wait till he turns around and does a spin. Hit him again. Now back up and run over in like kind of a, a corner kind of thing where you go around the other side. If done correctly, he should not be able to get to you and hit you and he'll be where he is because he was chasing you previously. Try to line up your shots as best as you can because you can see he's moving around. He does different animations. So I can't tell you what animation he's going to do. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Hit the bell. And then wait till you have a clear shot. And there you go. Very simple and easy to do on professional. And it shouldn't take you hopefully too long. He can be a little scary and intimidating, but once you get over that initial fear factor uh he all it's it's all about s being silent don't run when you're around him because that's how he'll get you so go ahead and take this uh green herb and we're gonna mix it in with our yellow and then that's pretty much for this section here and we're gonna go ahead and move back up tell ashley to follow us again we're gonna switch to our rifle and then we're gonna take out one of these guys the guy you take out is usually the one that's behind the first guy. He's going to be the one that doesn't have any weapon or ammo in his hand. That guy right there. Now this guy, we're trying to bait him to actually hit and he just decides he wants to just, you know, move forward. So we go ahead and just, you know, take him around back the other side and walk around him. Or you could just, you know, shoot another shot on him if you want to take him out that way as well. It's up to you. Here, make sure Ashley's following you, of course, through this whole time. And then just move straight forward. She will never get hit. Nothing will ever happen, and you'll be good to go. All right, next room. Holy crap. Get ready, because this is going to be tough. We're going to shoot the two guys on top first. And you need to do this very quickly. Then shoot the two shield guys. Aim for the head. You should get headshots. Immediately switch to your TMP. And we're just going to take down this guy. We're not going to kill him. We're just going to take him down. The whole point is we want to limit the amount of kills we get in this area at the beginning. Because if you get too many kills, then more enemies come through. So just keep running forward and go into this room here. We're going to tell Ashley to stop on either one. It doesn't matter if it's the left or right. Wait. Immediately turn around. Tell her to wait. Pick up whatever items are in this room. 
Now, when you turn around, sometimes it's always different. There might be a few guys in here already. Luckily, uh, it took them a while to get in there, so we can get past those guys. And as you can see, it's pretty clear for us, but it's not going to be the same for you. It changes every time. So you just, this one is the one you have to kind of roll with the punches. We're going to tell Ashley to be the one that cranks it. And we're going to protect her. Aim for the legs. We're not going for kills. And then we're going to get out our incendiary grenade, and then we're going to throw it at the shield guy. This will keep everybody on their toes, or should I say, keep them off their toes. Switch back to your TNP. And just uh, rinse and repeat as everyone is coming up. Shoot them if you need to, if they're too close. Do like kind of a circle. Go around, around, and then go back the other direction. That's the only way you're going to be able to get by those guys. Shoot the guy there, and then you should be able to go by him, and that's it. Look, there's a crank over there. You have to uh, uh, restart the checkpoint right here. You didn't see me do it, but you need to do it. So you've just restarted the checkpoint and you started here. We're going to switch to our rifle, make sure we're fully loaded. The reason you have to, to do the checkpoint is because the guards are still in there, but if you restart the checkpoint, once you get past it, everybody goes away. Watch out for me. All right, once you have control, we're going to move up here and then we're going to do a little bit of sniping. You've got plenty of time, so don't worry too much. But there's a lot to shoot. So one on the right, one on the left. This single guy here, and you can get a double shot with these two as soon as they round this corner. Now there's two more guys here. And then one more. Alright, so you've done most of the hard part. Next there's going to be a few more guys that you're going to have to take out. Specifically one that's going to be right here as he comes up on the stairs. Now we're going to go all the way down, and we're going to turn to the left. And we're going to wait after this cutscene here for a particular enemy that's going to start running. So get it so you can actually see where this enemy is right there. You don't have to shoot him. Not to waste your... But you do want to at least shoot the guy running out. Shoot this guy. He's the only guy you have to worry about because he runs at uh, Ashley and he can catch up to her. So here we're just going to go around and pick up some stuff. Now, I'm kind of an idiot here. I tried... As you can see, I missed that shot, so I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with him. It's not a big deal. Um, just go around and pick up whatever things that you want to pick up. Specifically, the things that you are going to want to pick up, depending on how you're doing with health and stuff, is you can grab something right here. Some money and an incendiary grenade. It, it might be different for you, I'm not sure. But one thing I can tell you is that you're going to get a hand grenade down here. And that hand grenade will come in handy in just a minute. Now, don't be like me and get stuck around the stairs here. <laughs> don't quick turn too quickly, as you can see. You should have plenty of time to make it back to her. As you can see, she is already waiting for you. If you're quick enough, you can actually get to her before she's done, and then you don't waste any time. But we got to her before that other guy could even reach her. And then that's pretty much it. Just grab whatever things that you want to grab that you think you need. If you don't need it, then it's fine. If you do, great. You got more stuff. Jump across, and congratulations. We've practically just beat Chapter 3-1. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. There's only one room left, and specifically in that room, uh, there's just a few things to get. Uh, you know, we're going to see the merchant sell whatever stuff that we can. You guys know the deal. I'm also going to go ahead and use two of my healths because we're already getting to the point where we have so many of those healths, so we might as well start using them. And we're going to be doing that throughout the next few chapters is to slowly start to use them more and more just because we want to get our health up. Like I said, this is I never planned this to be a no damage, even though we have really have taken no damage so far and we don't take any damage in chapter uh, three at all except for like a little fire damage, which really doesn't do anything to us. Um, and it's just, it's been great to do it so far. So we'll go ahead and turn around here. We're going to shoot this. And the only reason I, I pick a hand grenade or something like that to carry around is just because you walk around a little bit faster. Sell whatever you can or whatever you want to the merchant. And right to your Welcome. left there, there's a door. You can go in and play a mini game with shooting, Don't like a shooting gallery. So if sale, you want to do that, um, by all means, go and do that. It's really fun. And then you get some cool items. But it's nothing that we particularly need to do. <laughs> Thank you. Is that all straight? <laughs> Thank you. 
Is that old? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is going to be the it, uh, the end of chapter 3-1. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, this is the best part right here. You all right? I'm fine! Leave me alone! Ashley, wait! <laughs> Hunnigan, what happened? The transmission got cut off. <laughs> Salazar, how'd you... We've jacked the line. We didn't want you telling everyone any unnecessary information. Where's Ashley? Ah, oh, so she fell into one of our wonderful traps. We'll make sure we find her. Don't you worry about her. Oh, yes. I let our miserable insects out for some exercise down in the sewer. Thanks. That should keep me company, because boredom kills me. I look forward to our next encounter. In another life. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrino1, and this is Resident Evil 4 Pro Walkthrough. This is Chapter 3-2. Hopefully you guys are enjoying so far. First things first is we're going to be heading down here, and we're going to be taking out the first three. Um, I can I can never... Uh, Noistadors or something like that? Uh, I can never remember what their actual name is. Uh, sometimes they'll drop ammo, and other times they'll drop um, these specific gems that you can pick up. Uh, so, obviously, we're not picking up any hand grenade. But you can s see where their heads are. That's, like, just above where that little dangly thing is. Uh, so hopefully that'll help you to learn how to actually shoot where the head is. Those are the only th uh, Well, there's a one more that we're going to take out uh, a little bit later on. But uh, this is what I found to be uh, a better strategy. So here, stick to the left. Do a quick turn on this corner. If you do so, this uh, Noista door will not get you. Run all the way to the corner, and uh, we're going to turn the valve. Not before we actually pick up this. This was a pretty challenging section to get through. I tried to do it in a speedrunner-y fashion, but it was just a little too hard for me, so therefore I had to take out those three that you saw. And then plus, we're going to go ahead and take out this guy. He's going to be hanging pretty much from up here. You can see where his head is. Shoot him, and then switch to our... Flash. We're going to use the flash right when we get around this corner. Sometimes he can get in your way. As you can see, we were able to make it past. It can be tough. You might have to try it a few different times. Stick to the left side and try to look left as much as possible because that'll keep them from actually attacking you for some reason. I, I don't know why, but it just it keeps them from not attacking you. They won't follow you once you get into this room here, but then you just have to worry about the trap. So take your time. There's no reason to rush this part. And there you go. You've completed uh, one of the harder rooms in the game, and hopefully uh, I was able to help you out. See, sometimes you can't pick up other things when something else is there. Like there was a spindle we couldn't pick up because we didn't want to pick up the hand grenade. Here, all you're going to want to do is switch over to the uh, the hand grenade and throw it down. When you do a jump, don't jump immediately. Wait till it goes back. That way you jump off. Now, you need to close the door before the main honcho guy has uh, has enough time to actually escape. And you're going to go ahead and shoot him in the head. One of those always pops out on him, so just try your best to get away from him as soon as you can and get enough space to be able to shoot him. What he picks up is a, a very uh, valuable item, so... Oh, 
although it isn't by no means necessary for you to pick up, but as you can see how many spindles we actually get from doing this, it's uh, quite profitable for later on. And of course, we're back in that main area that we were at before when we started this chapter. Although we're going to be heading up and go to the other side. This is how you're going to be able to get around to the other side so you can grab another uh, high value collectible item. So you're going to jump across here, but this time hit it immediately. And then uh, we're going to pick up an item to our left. And then we're going to go forward and do the same thing on the other side, but do a, another jump across. Except further down, this is the different one, so that way you can actually get across this area. And we picked up another elegant mask. So now we have two of them. Which we'll be, you know, obviously selling them a little bit later. I haven't picked up all the items for the elegant mask. It's just mainly to get a little bit of money so that we have enough to buy things like rocket launchers and whatnot. Because we really haven't been upgrading any uh, weapons Welcome. or anything like that. Got some rare things on set. What are you selling? I'm going to see. I don't know if it's 100% sure, but I'm going to see if I can play this, this entire walkthrough without upgrading a single item. I think that's a good challenge for us. Thank you. But obviously, if I find that it's just uh, with what I have and all that kind of stuff, if it's not possible, then clearly, you know, we'll, we'll adjust there. But I'm going to try to go without upgrading anything. Come back any time. All right, so this room can be definitely tricky. So it's going to take you a few times to figure it all out. Especially, make sure your ammo is stocked up, especially on your rifle. Pick up the red herb ear, and then uh, we're going to be moving forward. You'll have a cutscene here in just a moment. Immediately move forward and to the left. Sometimes you'll get hit there, sometimes you won't. Immediately go to the left, and then we're going to go upstairs and around. We're going to have our flash grenade already ready. This is going to allow us to be able to flash all the guys that are in that main section. And there's a reason to do this, because we want time in order to shoot the main guy. Stand on this corner here so nobody can fire anything at you while you throw that flash. You'll have a little cutscene here where this guy is going to move forward. He'll give you just a moment to aim. If you can get that first shot in, then you should be able to take him out. While everyone is still stunned. And now go ahead and switch back to your TMP, and we're going to shoot at this barrel, which is going to take out some of the other guards. It won't take out everyone, but it'll make it easier when you come back through. Now, there are also guards that are coming from uh, downstairs, so just make sure you're aware of them. I always say guards because I'm so used to playing Splinter Cell, but... So this is all on you. Sometimes it'll be different. Maybe there won't be anybody there. Maybe there will be. So just do the method of aiming for the feet to get them down as quickly as possible. Here, go down here, and then move along the far side so that the guy doesn't hit you. Because there still is one guy down here. Now once you open this door, he will still be there. He's going to be coming through, as you can see, right behind us. There's be a few of them. So if you want, I mean, you could go ahead and take uh, them out, or you could go ahead and do the puzzle and just leave the room if you don't really care about grabbing anything that's in here. There'll be one more that'll come through. But as you can see, you can do the method of just one TMP shot and then a bunch of uh, slices and you should be fine. Now you've got all the time in the world to do this puzzle, which is, um, in my opinion, the hardest puzzle in the game. And you're going to need it, because I have a feeling that you might have to restart this puzzle a few times just because of the how tough it is. But I'll, I'll try to do my best to show you, because it changes every single time. This is one of those puzzles that that is always going to be different, so therefore you can't really, um, you know, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's the easiest puzzle in the game. It's the combination of my luggage. Do a little maintenance here. The combination is... One, two, three, four. It's the combination of my luggage. <laughs> Little Spaceballs reference for you.
What a pleasant surprise. But I'm afraid it's Ashley we need. Not you, Mr. Kennedy. If you don't need me, then get off my back, old man. <gasps> Did you say old man, Mr. Kennedy? It might come as a surprise, but I'm only 20 years old. So you're just like all the others? A puppet of the parasites? Surely you don't think I'm the same as those diminutive ganados. The parasites, las plagas, are slaves to my will. I have absolute control. Well, I really don't give a damn. Rain or shine, you're going down. So immediately be pressing up and right as soon as the cutscene is over. That way you can get around that guy. This is a very tough one. A lot of random things are going to happen. You need to press this button, and hopefully you'll be able to get to it quicker than I did. I was cutting it a little close there. Move around the side and get to over here. Obviously take out whoever you need to on the way just to make sure that you're safe. There are a lot of guys with uh, rocket launchers. Once you get into this room, you can actually have the rocket launcher guys do the work for you. Go ahead and press this button. Strainception. Yes, I'm commenting over myself. Ha -ha. Until you hear a rocket go off, you will hear one. As soon as you do, then you can move forward, because that means that the rocket launcher guys have killed those that were following you. And just continually run. Don't stop. And you should be able to make it past him. Once this cutscene is over, go up forward a little bit, then stop, hesitate slightly. That'll give the rocket launcher guys a target to aim at, and then they'll take out, most of the time, the guys that are right here in the middle for you. And then there you go. So you're just going to go back the same way, except you're going to go back to the left this time. And then exit the room. Immediately turn around, and then go back. All enemies have now disappeared, and you have free reign to collect any items that you may have missed in this room. So, for some reason, I guess uh, the developers thought there's no way uh, Leon would be uh, dumb enough to return to the room where there was just a bunch of enemies with rocket launchers firing at you. <laughs> so, uh, it pretty much just despawned all of the enemies, and uh, yeah, interesting. I mean, it's not that there's that much to pick up in this area, but there is, I believe, a yellow herb over here. So it's definitely, definitely worth going back to make sure you can grab that. And that's pretty much it for that. Um, and then we have a few sections up ahead. Uh, the, the toughest one that we're going to be doing up ahead is going to be the maze and I'm going to make the maze look like it's nothing because it really is nothing. There's really only one thing that you technically need or would want and that is uh you know a a, a very high value item. Once you move forward up here, there's going to be three uh, spindles, I believe. or Either they're spindles or they're velvet blues. I can't remember which one. Yeah, they're velvet. Spindles and velvet blues that you can pick up. And then a bunch of crates here. All right, so now we're going to be moving up to the maze scene, and uh, you're going to see that it's a lot easier than you think. Especially since we're only going to get one high-value item, and that's really the only high-value item there is. The rest of the stuff is just, you know, regular ammo or grenades or a little bit of money, but this one is a high-value item that I'll show you. But first, we have a cutscene, so... Mr. Kennedy, still alive, I see. So, 
Do you like my garden? I see you've managed to work in a little of your twisted taste here, too. <laughs> Sagacious as I am, even I get lost here sometimes. Even if it takes your whole life, you'll never get out. Do you know that no one dies without a cause? You will satisfy the stomachs of my cute pets. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to tie up a few loose ends, like chasing down a couple of rats. Two rats? If one's Lewis, who's the other? Huh, they're an intruder besides me? All right, so I'm going to show you how to get through this very, very easily. Immediately go forward through the gate, and we're going to take a slight left and then a slight right. Stay to the right side here, and that dog will never hit you. When you come around the corner, go to the right. There's that dog that is following you. Now this is the tricky part. We're going to go to the right here and keep circling to the right. And we're going to pick up this collectible here. Now when you turn around, the dog might be on you sometimes. So just be a lookout on, you know, he didn't obviously, you know, come after me. But uh, you might have to shoot him once or twice. Other than that, go ahead and pick up your first... Part. We're going to head to the right once you head down. All this is done very quickly. Do not stop. Do not hesitate. Continue to move. As soon as you pass this, you'll see that there are three dogs right there. They will come out of that cage. Continue to move forward. If you look up, for some reason, the dogs do not want to hit you at all. They don't want to grab you. They don't want to do anything. So move to the right here. Grab that one. And then do like a semi-circle. But look up. If you look up, it doesn't matter if you run into the dogs or not. They just don't grab you. So as you can see... I mean, we just made one of the hardest sections, the most confusing sections when you're playing the game for the first time, to be pretty much a piece of cake. Now, also one thing to remember is that the dogs are following you and they can still follow you into the room uh, in the next chapter, so just remember that as well. Put your hands where I can see them. Sorry. But following a lady's lead just isn't my style. Put them up now. Huh. Bit of advice. Try using knives next time. Works better for close encounters. Leon. Long time no see. Ada. So it is true. True? About what? You, working with Wesker. I see you've been doing your homework. Why, Ada? What's it to you? Why are you here? Why'd you show up like this? <laughs> See you around. Ada! What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to Chapter 3-3 in Resident Evil 4 Pro Walkthrough. First off, if you uh, shoot that down, you can actually grab a spindle. Just remember, you've got some dogs here, so get it out as quickly as you can. Uh, from this point, we don't have to worry about the dogs anymore, so you can kind of slow it down a little bit. This is uh, probably considered one of the shortest chapters, so this is going to be a very short video as you'll be able to get through this, hopefully, with uh, this guide uh, fairly easy. Although I would also consider that this chapter has one of the, the saddest moments in Resident Evil 4. But a good chapter nonetheless, and uh, it can give you a little bit of problems, especially this next part coming up. But if you do it just like I do, then you should be able to uh, get around it. So we're going to hit this bell, and we want to shoot the wine bottle. And it can be a tough shot to do, but uh, just hit the wine bottle and you're good to go. Now here, when you turn around, stay as close to the wall on the left side as you can. As you can see me kind of inching my way. Shoot the glass. Don't go too far uh, to the right. If you do, you'll automatically get the cutscene. As you see, as soon as I move forward, there's the cutscene. Make sure you skip this cutscene. Grab 
grab the item, and then we're going to shoot the lock off, and also shoot the guy right outside as well. Open it up, and then you should be able to move forward. You have to skip the cutscene. If you don't skip that cutscene, then you will automatically have uh, the big the big guy down there with you, and then he'll make it impossible uh, to open it up without messing with him a little bit. So skip that cutscene, even though I showed it to you. Make sure you skip it. Here, just shoot those guys, and then immediately go for the switch. Uh, just, you know, dodge them, try to get around them. Shouldn't be too tough. And we're going to shoot this so we can grab some more rifle ammo. There is going to be a guy that's going to be running at you. We're going to aim at the uh, the light above us. Wait till they get underneath and then shoot. And then there you go, guys. You've just completed the chapter. I kid you not. It's literally that quick. <laughs> grab a spindle right here. And uh, I would say enjoy the cutscene, but uh, it's not really something enjoyable, so... Leon, I got it. Lewis! I have the sample. You serve me no purpose. Sadler! My boy Salazar will make sure you follow the same fate. Stay with me, Lois. I am a researcher hired by Sadler. He found out what I was up to. <laughs> Don't talk. Here. It should suppress growth of the parasite. The sample. Sadler took it. You have to get it back. Lewis! Lewis! What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrain01, and we have got more Resident Evil 4. First things first is you're going to want to go ahead and get out your rifle, and we're going to be taking out these uh, three things that are holding Ashley. Talk about near-death experience. Ashley, get out of there! All right, so you only got three enemies to worry about. First one's going to be down here on the left. He's the only one that runs, as you can see. So you want to be try to try to be a little quick on getting him. Second one's going to be on the right side, and the third one will be just below this left here. You can obviously do it faster, but again, we're not going for times. Go ahead and pick up some more ammo because you are going to go pretty much directly into the next section with Ashley. So pick up whatever you can uh, that you can pick up now. Now, this method, you're going to take out the, the guy in red as quickly as possible, his legs, so you can shoot a grenade to take him out, and another person. Now, some if you do it quick enough, obviously, I just uh, I wasn't quick enough. You can actually uh, take them all out at the same time, but I just didn't do it quick enough. But I took those two out rather quickly, and then just go ahead and shoot the final guy, and then you should be good to go. Now, there's no real explanation needed for the Ashley section. It's pretty easy to get through. As long as you know where you're going, there won't be too much problems for you. So here, all you're going to want to do is just pretty much run straight forward and into the right. Go ahead and crawl under these two, and then once you're done crawling, go to the left and start doing the turning thing. All you want to do is get it up to the very top of the last line that you see going across. So once you see me get to that top line, that's tall enough for her. You're going to go ahead and stop, move forward, do the same, except this time you want to go just a little bit past the halfway point. 
and then go ahead and turn around before the other guy sees you, and then you should be able to get through, and then no one else will actually be able to follow you as well, so you're pretty much good to go. You can pick up any items you see along the way. You will be able to add these to your collection once you take over as um, Leon. Here, we're going to crawl underneath, move forward, and hit this button first. You're going to turn around, go through the new door that just opened up, and you're going to do the same thing on this left side right here. Also pick up the piece of the puzzle. We're going to go back to where we were. Pick up, of course, any miscellaneous items. And then do the same thing here. So this is a very short video, guys. Again, there's only two sections in this um, checkpoint. And then we're done with Chapter 3. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed Chapter 3. It's been my pleasure to bring it to you. We figured all this out in the live stream. So if you want to see how we figured all this out, you can always watch the live stream. But um, I'll try to get these videos out, you know, as fast as I can. Some of them can take quite a while to learn strategies for and whatnot. But uh, I really do hope you guys are enjoying them. So make sure you leave that like as it really does help. Also, comment below because comments really do matter a lot when it comes to the YouTube's algorithm. Um, I remember the first time I did this puzzle, I got completely lost. But it's actually super one of the easiest puzzles to do. Start with the middle piece to the, to the right and then go in increments by two in a counterclockwise fashion and you just do one more and then go ahead and place that final piece and there you go puzzle complete and you get into a new room so inside this new room are going to be two items that you're going to get one of them is going to be the uh, what allows you to leave this area and the other one will be the actual I believe it's a lion right or the serpent. It's the serpent. So now enemies are here. So what you want to do is just continue to move forward. They hit so slow that you should be able to get by them. Now we got some quick time events. These are pretty easy to do. Just be ready for them. It can be a total of three. And remember, your combinations are either X and A or LT and RT. And there's going to be one more at the uh, right before you uh, go through the door. And then you're pretty much good to go. Now we're just going to use, uh, or should I say we're just going to turn. We're going to pick up whatever we can in this room. And then we're going to uh, place this and turn it. This is giving you more backstory into Salazar. And that's going to reveal the opening for you to go to the next uh, section, which uh, is just a cutscene, and then we'll continue on in chapter four, which will be the final part of the chapter, the entire, or should it, the final part of the castle. So there's, um, I think, either three or four checkpoints inside that uh, chapter four, and then you'll be able to move on to the island. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the walkthrough again. It's been my complete pleasure to bring it to you. Don't forget to become a member if you can. It really helps out. This is what we do full time now, so Leon. anything helps. Ashley, <laughs> you did good. I'm sorry if I was. Oh, don't worry about it. Come on, let's move on. All right, hopefully. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I know it's been a little bit of time, but I wanted to kind of space it out a little bit, give myself a little bit of a break from Resident Evil 4 so that we can come back in here nice and strong before Resident Evil 3 comes out. So we are continuing on with Chapter 4-1 with our Resident Evil 4 Pro walkthrough. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and use all of those health max upgrades. This is going to allow my health to go up a lot, even though I'm still not taking any damage. It's just going to be better for the time comes that maybe if we take damage, and that we don't get uh, pretty much one-shotted if we do take some damage or whatever like that. So, And I'm going to try to make a little bit of space for some stuff uh, coming up in the future. Oh, what a touching moment we have here. All spoiled thanks to your interruption. Why don't you do us all a favor and leave before the audience gets pissed off? <laughs> You're nothing but an extra in my script, so don't get too carried away. Your biggest scene is over. 
I don't ever remember being a part of your crappy script. Well then, why don't you show me what a first class script is like through your own actions? Alright, so all we're gonna do now is pretty much just loot the room. Again, this is a, a mixture between really fast rooms sometimes, uh, good strats for making it through very quickly, and other times for making sure you actually go around and grab a few of the items, as I want to make sure I have enough money for buying certain stuff and to get a little bit more out of the game. Again, this is not a speed run, even though there are some times where we will get through a section really, really quickly. So we're just going to grab a few things here. Uh, as far as the beginning, this is the, considered the longest chapter in the game. So this video is going to be about 30 minutes or so, and uh, it's crazy long, and it can be really, really, really tough. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy some of the strats I do up, uh, up ahead. So you can obviously use this as a good save point if you want, or you can do it on the way back. We'll do it when we're coming back through here. Uh, for now, uh, Leon is going to go across here just by himself. Wait here. So all I can tell you about the next room is you're going to want to skip the cutscene of when the dragon is falling. If you do not, then you won't be able to pull off what I'm going to pull off. Timing is crucial, so immediately go ahead and start running forward. Now, we're not skipping the cutscene until after we get through this section a little bit. Make sure you have your rifle out, and we're going to take out this guy that's up ahead while we're waiting for the thing to turn back around. If done correctly, you can get it uh, pretty much right away. When this cutscene plays, skip it. That way, the uh, it's still up in the air, and you can get one shot and then go for the second. If done correctly, then that's it. Two shots it takes to get down. If not, then you'll probably take damage because uh, they have fire breathing out of their mouths. And you can take a lot of damage. So go ahead and pick up the final thing that we need for this area. And go ahead and reload because you do have to wait a little bit. So the reload is like a perfect little wait. Stay as close to this left side so that he actually doesn't grab you. If you go too far to the right, he'll actually have a long sprint to grab you. And then you pretty much just cleared this room. Wasn't too difficult to, to, to get by. Uh, you should be able to handle that one pretty easy. But it's a few of the next rooms coming up that can be very, very troublesome. Now, I died a few times in a few of these rooms, so you'll see that at the end, but obviously you're not seeing it here. We don't take any damage in this walkthrough from what you see, but there are a lot of um, times that you're going to have to die here and there as you're learning, as you're trying to get through each room, trying to figure out what you need to do exactly. So these strats are to help you to be able to figure that out and to eliminate those types of deaths, but obviously they're not... they don't count for us since they're not the ones that we moved forward with. So we're going to be heading back to the main hallway that we started when we got to the castle. Obviously, we're going to pick up a few items here. Now, again, you know, you don't actually have to. You've got plenty of money at this point, but I'm just a resources hog, and I love picking things up, and I love exploring the game and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, you're back in that main hall when we first entered this area. And we're going to go ahead and apply all three of the crests. You've got the goat, the lion, and the snake. Now, as you can see, there's some stairs to the right. Uh, you can pick up a little bit of money. So if you are a little bit light on money, maybe you haven't picked up as much stuff as you could have, then make sure you uh, do this. You'll also pick up a hand grenade. And then you can actually kind of stand where, uh, where he stood during that one cutscene towards the beginning of the castle. And don't forget, of course, to pick up your money. It's a good chunk of change, 5,000. 
And of course you need those for the strats that we do for bosses and whatnot to uh, the rocket launchers. And then we're going to go ahead and move forward. We have another cart to take. So all I can tell you is you can do these next few rooms in whatever order you want. Uh, there's two different orders. But I suggest you just follow the order that you see here, although it doesn't really matter which order you do them in. There also is a merchant, um, and it's going to be as soon as you enter this room to the right, but we're not going to go there yet. So we're going to head to the left and go through here first. We have a little puzzle, very easy to do. You're going to want to move this two forward, move this uh, two forward, and then have Ashley stand here wait. tell her to wait. And then you, what you're going to want to do is move this one right here two more so that it fits on this, and then do the same thing. This one's going to take three. And then you stand on the last one, and you're good to go. Now, do not enter the room. A cutscene will play as soon as you enter the room. Uh, you can go ahead and actually take out the these little red or pinkish things here. This will allow you, uh, the room actually not to kind of fall and crush you. If, if you don't do it, then you have a very limited amount of time to do that once you enter the room. I think you've lived long enough. Let's see if you can survive this time. And exactly. Yep, they won't fall anymore because you've already actually uh, took them out. Now here you're going to have two guys that are going to try to crush Ashley. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is turn around, try to get a shot on him. It can be a little hard. Use your Either use your rifle or your TMP, whichever one. Matalo! Okay, these guys only take one hit, so very easy to take them out. But it can be hard with the Team B because uh, you can barely see your aiming. And go ahead and pick up everything you see in the room. going to be the item you need for the queen and then we have the king the king section can be a little tough um i'm not very good at doing the speed run strats for it where those guys can get through it within like 10 seconds but that's that's not me so the strategy that i'm going to show you is something that uh, you should be able to get by pretty much every single time Albeit a very, very much slower strategy, but one that keeps me from getting hit, and I'm just not that fast with aiming in this game. As I don't play it, you know, all the time. It's not a game I speed run. Now here, go ahead and move to the left. Pick up the flash grenade. You're going to need that. And then go ahead and pick up all of these extra items here. This is, once you come back through here, uh, there's going to be a lot of enemies, so this is your perfect chance to actually come in here and do it. Again, you don't have to, but they do drop a lot of really cool stuff that you can mix in with some of the key items that you have, which will allow you to get more money in the long run. And as you can see, there's the king and the queen. There's nothing else in this room, so you're pretty much free to go ahead and go. I got confused for another room that's coming up ahead where you can actually move outside and pick up some extra things if you want. And as you can see, this is where the merchant is, but you don't need to enter where the merchant is just yet. I'm just showing you where it is. And you can also do another shooting range if that's your style. Those are always fun to get the little bobbleheads. And even that music is still unsettling. It's supposed to mean that you're safe, but all it does is make me even more nervous when I hear that, you know? All right, so this next section, we're going to equip our rifle, and we're going to tell Ashley to go ahead and wait. wait. You're going to have two uh, quick time events here, so just mash your buttons. Doesn't matter if you're always mashing X and A, LT and RT, you always get it. Just keep mashing back and forth, and you should be fine. All right, here. 
My strategy is to get the guy on the left as quickly as possible. Skip the cutscene. Make sure you skip that cutscene. Now, you're just... It's very easy to dodge these guys, and it becomes... What you want to do is get close enough to them to where they stop to actually try to swing at you, because as you can see, you can easily get around them, and you need all three of them to stop. So just line up your shots. There you go. Perfect. Now, if you're quick enough, you can do it there, but he was very close to hit me, so I went ahead and stopped. Switch to the flash, and we're going to throw it at our feet. That's going to take the first three out. Immediately go to this area here. We're going to re-equip the rifle. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing, although this time we can actually take two of them out quickly. If you're good enough at shooting. I'm just not very good at shooting. So aim about right here. Get the first one. Second one. And we may have been able to get that third one right there, but I decided that it just wasn't worth it in my opinion. And there you go. So now you have all three of them. Just try to not get hit. That's the whole important thing. Get another flash and... There you go. So, it is pretty hard, but because all of their moves are so easy to dodge, you don't have to be as as cautious as you might think. Just as soon as you see them, if, if they're chasing you, because they will just endlessly chase you unless you get close enough to them to make them stop and try to swing at you, that is what you want. You want them to try to swing at you, swing at you so that you when you move forward again you can turn around and they're still standing still but there you go so we've got the king and we've got the queen and now we can head back to that original long room uh, to go to the next section which is definitely the hardest in this uh, level probably one of the hardest in the game now you could if you wanted to use a rocket launcher that we're about to get on the big sack in the room of the Nikistadors, or whatever they're called. But we're going to use that rocket launch for something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell a few things that we can. Obviously, we don't need this handgun ammo because it wasn't something that I meant to pick up. Thank you. And sell a few more items here that we actually really, really don't need. But before we sell them, you always obviously want to make sure that the things you just picked up, like your red gym and whatnot, you can actually add to a few items. So we're going to go ahead and sell the chessboard for now. Thank you. And then we're going to wait because we can actually put this elegant mask together all the way. And we can actually add a green eye and a blue eye. There's another eye, unfortunately, that we Is don't that have stranger? that you could add to you. Um, one Is of the things. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and back out of here, go into our key treasures, and add those items. Now you have to make sure that they're the ones that you add are specific color-wise. See, we've already added a green in the other one, so therefore we can add it to that one. Now the red one is the last one we need to complete the ensemble for the first one. And then these green and blue, uh, they can be mixed into the uh, butterfly. And there you go. And you can go ahead and sell those again and get more money. What are you selling? I go ahead and pretty much sell, you know, all of them, even though there's still more that we could have mixed into the elegant mask. And there's actually another big thing that you can get up ahead, but we're not going to get it. And the reason is because that room is so tough that you'll be doing it a bunch of times. I probably did that room, I want to say, this room coming up about 40 times before I got the outcome that you saw. And I actually died in this room, I think, twice. And that's the two deaths I had in this level. Uh, because this room is just crazy trying to get through it. It's not that it's it's actually not difficult to get through at all. It's difficult to get through without taking damage. That's the only thing that makes it tough. And since we're going for no damage as much as as long as possible, that's why we're doing it. Go ahead and save here if uh, if you want. That way, if your game crashes or something, you don't have to go all the way back to your last save to start this chapter over again. It's always good to save anytime you see one of those. But here we go. This strategy, tell Ashley to wait. Wait. Follow. Follow me. Wait. Wait. Follow. Follow me. And then move around the side. <laughs> and then you should be able to get past them all. Go over here. This is the red. Tell Ashley to wait. Wait. And then move over here into the blue. And then immediately go through the door as soon as you can. And as you can see, we barely are going to make this before Ashley gets grabbed. 
Perfect. All right, so here I'm only going to pick up a few items because, like I said, this took me 40 times, and I'm not going to go through and pick up every single item. But there are a bunch of things that you can pick up. You can go outside to the right there, pick up a red herb, as well as another uh, collectible. Immediately, we're going to switch to our flash, and here we go. Start running immediately. Sometimes you'll get grabbed here, and if you do and you're going for no damage, just restart the checkpoint. Immediately move to the left here. We're going to grab this right here. Turn around. Throw your flash. Immediately throw your flash up and over so that it actually lands and it doesn't go down. Here, I actually got the lucky enough that I actually got the kicks. If you get the kicks, that's perfect, because no one else can attack you while you're being kicked. Do another flash here, that's why we have a bunch of flashes. Get out your submachine gun or your TMP, and we're going to shoot these locks off. If you've done everything the way that I've done, hopefully you'll be able to get through, but this will take you quite a long time to do it, even the way that I'm showing you. Other than that, just shoot the rocket launcher at the big nest. But then that could screw up what you have coming up ahead. We're going to go ahead and save again just in case. We're not going to see the merchant as there's nothing that we need from him right now. But we are going to switch to the rocket launcher. It'll allow us to move through these next places faster. Pick up whatever items you see here that you think that could actually be good for you. I wonder if you can see me, Mr. Kennedy. If you even scratch her, I'll break your bones. First, we shall see if you can make it this far. I'll be waiting. Shit. Immediately move forward, we'll have another cutscene here. I just done. This might take you a few times to get the timing right. You do not want to stop for anything. Keep going. Only thing you need to worry about is this guy that could grab you on the ledge, but he actually didn't, so... Other than that, once you get up here, just keep going. Do not stop. And hopefully you'll be able to get through. Here, switch to our TMP, and we're going to shoot out the two blocks. Now, like I said, that section's a lot tougher than you might think. You just got to keep going. And if it looks like one of them's about to attack you, well, it's simple. You Sometimes you got to think on your feet. If it looks like he's about to attack you, back up and then move forward. Here we're going to move all the way up. We have one more block to shoot, and then we have a green herb that we're going to be picking up as well. Once you actually activate the, uh, the switch, then you'll have a cutscene, and that cutscene will trigger a new checkpoint, so you don't have to go all the way back to the beginning of the room, so that's good. Alright, so, immediately turn around, be as fast as you can, because timing is actually pretty crucial during this, as sometimes the enemies can actually shoot you with their crossbows here. So if you do get shot and you're going for that no damage, well, just restart it. It can be pretty tough to get through here, I mean, although I got to the point where I got through this section rather easy every single time, it was towards the bottom that I always got hit on. So kind of do a little dodge there just to make sure you don't get hit. Here, you're going to go ahead and reload your weapon, just uh, because there's going to be a dynamite thrown ahead, so you might as well. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to want to uh, try to bait this guy for an attack right there a little bit. Shoot him. Shoot these two so they don't get their shot on you. And then move around to the far right so he doesn't, and then there you go. Next room is another tough one. Immediately switch to your uh, rocket launcher. Wait till they move up about three or four steps, and then go. So you don't trigger the cutscene before you actually get with him. 
You want to trigger the cutscene so that it, it does that. You want to skip that second cutscene. If you don't skip it, then you won't be able to get through there. Here, you're going to want to go ahead and shoot. Switch to your rifle, and then do the final shot on the armored guy, and then you're good to go. Now you can go ahead and take these guys out, because we're going to pick up some items here. There will be one more guy that comes through, and then a bunch of others come through. So let me explain what I did in that room before, because it happens so fast. Um, immediately we switched to that rocket launcher, we moved forward, we waited three steps for those guys, so that way they come further across the bridge, so we can actually be past them before the cutscene plays. Once that cutscene plays, then immediately skip it. If you don't skip it, then you won't be able to get through it like I do. Uh, then move forward, bait those two attacks, once they do that, back forward, or back, and then go forward again, and then kind of weave yourself around the rocket, and then you should be good to go. Now, the longer you wait in this room, the more guards that are going to show up, or the more... I say guards because I'm so used to playing Splinter Cell. Uh, the more enemies that are going to show up. There might be something up there that I missed, and I apologize, but uh, I started hearing him, and I was just like, nah. But it looks like there isn't anything. Just picking up whatever we can. There's guys behind us, so that's why we're moving pretty fast through here. All right, well, the hardest part in this level is done, but we're still not over yet. Leon! <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, don't you know when it's time to throw in the towel? Satisfying sound of one's impalement. Don't fall for this old trick. Ah! How dare you! No more games! Kill him! Kill! Quickly! We shall prepare for the ritual! nine lives, but it doesn't matter now, Mr. Kennedy. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hm. Say whatever you please. Die, you worm! Alright, so now that we're down here, you're a little safe. There's no enemies right here. However, we are going to switch and do a few different things here. So we're going to take the yellow herb and all of the ammo. Everything you see here, we're going to go ahead and take. And then we're going to mix that yellow herb So now we have two more uh, that we'll eventually be able to use. Go ahead and save here as well. Now, as far as this goes, Welcome. what you're going to want to do is you're going to sell your riot you gun. So that's your shotgun. What are you selling, even though we really only used it once. So honestly, there was no reason to Thank even you. get it. So you saw me get the riot gun before. And I used it ah, once right there at the end, honestly, so there was really no reason you. to do it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and sell some Is Velvet Blues. <laughs> sell the rest of these, because uh, we no longer really need any of them. Even though you will be able to get more stuff to put in them, but... <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Now you're going to want to go ahead buying? and buy the brand new Striker. And there's a particular reason that you want to buy this. Because Is it allows you to do something pretty cool, and I'll show you in just a second. No, I know that. Uh, don't look at me for inventory management right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's not one of my strong... Organization is not my strong suit. We're also going to get the rocket launcher. That's going to become in handy for the next boss fight that we have right here. And there you go. So we're going to keep the <laughs> rifle just because I like Thank using you. the rifle. Come back anytime. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to equip your... Um, striker, obviously, you know, grab the crown as well. We're not going to sell that yet. You're going to equip your striker. Now, what they did was they sped up the animation for when you're using your striker. So with that light there, that's a lot faster than it was in the original game. As soon as you aim, the moment you hit aim, go into your inventory. 
and then switch to like a grenade or a rocket launcher or whatever. And then you'll notice that we're about 2.5 or 1.5 times faster than we normally are. You see how much quicker we're running? It is a glitch in the game. And normally I don't use glitches when I do this kind of stuff, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, and this happens every single time you use the striker. And you can see we're moving through here a lot quicker. So if you're really going for those faster... Um, oh, don't forget to pick up your red. That way we can add that to one of our... One of these here. Perfect. And there is our next boss battle. Again, every single time you have like a cutscene or something like that, you have to redo it. Equip the striker, aim inventory at the same time, and then go back to whatever like a weapon. Doesn't matter what weapon it is, but in this case, we're doing the rocket launcher because we're going to be using it up ahead. And as you can see, you move through here a lot faster. So we'll be using this strategy a lot more in the uh, all the rest of the chapters. Every time you enter a door and you do all that, you got to do it all over again. But it's a pretty easy thing to do. So it's just like you aim and immediately go for... Uh, all right, here, this is pretty easy. Always have your hands ready on X and A and LT and RT. If you just hit them all at the same time, it will work. As you can see. Now, this will happen about three or four times. Now, notice how we lost our fastness. That's okay. Because anytime something, anytime something like this happens, you're going to lose it. Just be ready for all of the, the quick time events here. Once you do the power unit, you don't have to worry about him uh, hitting you anymore. So the strategy in this next one is as soon as the cinema is done, you're going to want to turn around, walk for just a second, and then move forward. And you'll see what I mean as soon as this cinema up here is done. It will allow you to have time to be able to move around and take him out quickly. Walk forward, and now move. When you hear him do that, that's your cue that you can, that you're pretty, you've done it right. Throw this down. Make sure you're angled so you can actually hit him with your rocket. There you go. Congratulations, you have just beat him. And you pick up the crown jewel, and you're pretty much done with this chapter. Hopefully I was able to help you get by it a little bit better. This was definitely a hard chapter to do. That's why I didn't live stream it because I wanted to... I can't really... Uh, my back is hurting really bad still. I've got a pretty bad back right now. So sitting down for a long period of time is not really good, which is why I haven't been live streaming a lot. So hopefully, you know, this will be alleviated sometime in the near future and then we can get back to live streaming and doing all that great stuff. But other than that, there you go. That is pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Thank you again so much for watching. It's been my pleasure to bring this walkthrough to you guys. Hopefully it's helped you out. Have a good one, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out. It seems that Salazar is having difficulty taming the American pig. Salazar had his chance. Krauser, go get the girl. Oh, and uh, dispose of the swine while you're at it. Consider it done. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina1. This is more Resident Evil Pro walkthrough. Hopefully you guys are enjoying so far. Chapter 4-2, which is considered to be, uh, with the way that I'm going to do it, probably one of the shortest chapters, as you can see by the length of this video as we're going to be able to get through it uh, pretty easily. So like I said in the beginning of this walkthrough, I'm mixing a little bit of welcome. Actually, you know, taking on some rooms some and then also a mixture of speed running to get through other rooms. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, getting a rocket launcher. Now there are two different ways that you can complete this next room. One with a rocket launcher and one where you can actually glitch through the, uh, the room. Um, I'm not very good at glitching through the, uh, the, there's like a specific place that you have to stand in order to do it in the next room, and I'm not just very good at it, so we're going to use the rocket launcher method. 
So, obviously, every single time we are doing the move where we equip uh, our inventory as soon as we're aiming with the striker and then switching to a weapon that you put on your back or a weapon you carry, uh, as this is a, a lot faster movement than you normally would have. Now, normally here you're supposed to, you know, like, do all kinds of things in this room where you have a bunch of people to face off against. But all you have to do is just shoot right here. You should kill those two, and you can actually take out the boulder as well. Pick up whatever you can here in the uh, in the crates, and then move on. Very easy to do. Now, this next section is actually supposed to be a boss fight. Do the same thing you always do, which equip your shotgun, uh, aim it at the same time, press inventory, and then we're going to go to our flash grenade just so we can move fast. You're going to grab a um, hand grenade over here, and then we're going to climb. So once you go towards the door, you'll start this cutscene where... Two of the big, uh, gigantic guys come out, and then you have to face them. Well, if you do this right here, because you're still in fast mode, I guess it... Your character's moving fast. You need to hurry up and get back before the zipline comes back to you. If you do it correctly, and you use the zipline before it actually comes back, you will glitch through the wall, and then you will bypass this entire area. So like I said, I'm showing you different strategies just depending on if I want to complete a room 100% or get through it in a quick way. And that is how you can bypass those two El Gigantes very, very easily without even having to take any of them out. So the next room is really tough. You're probably going to die a few times, so same strategy as always. Have your striker ready. Equip and uh, inventory as soon as you start, and then quick uh, equip your flash. You're going to be running through here almost the entire time. This is very tricky to do. And it might take you a lot of time to actually get it. There's a flash grenade here on the ground. So these, uh, this is the last time you have to deal with the flying enemies. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you how to get through them without taking damage. Well, like I said, this will take you a few times before you get it per perfect. But uh, immediately look up here, throw your flash, look to the left, because for some reason... Uh, they don't actually attack you, so, I mean, I'm not sure what explains it, if you look left or right or something like that, but they do not attack you if you look away from them, most of the time. Here you're going to equip your striker. Uh, you're going to shoot them, uh, usually about one shot in their gun, but for some reason one of them lived here, but as long as you can get by, uh, you should be okay. Remember, always go back into that animation of where you can run faster. It's a very, very important strategy for getting through this room as you're going to be quick enough to be able to get around them without taking any damage. This time when you turn around, um, you're just going to want to do the same thing as last time, except we're not going to be uh, using our flash grenade. We're just going to be doing a quick 180 and then getting out of there while looking left. Also, pick up whatever, you know, uh, items they may have dropped. You should be able to pick them up without any problems. You'll see here that I do come very close to getting hit, but because you're just fast enough because of this little... Um, striker glitch or whatever you want to call it. Also, pick up a uh, red herb here just in case. Now, remember, I haven't done any damage, but you might need it if uh, unless you're going for no damage as well. But I always like to pick it up because we can add it to our inventory, and now we have another max health. Now, this next section, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just wait until you can go. You're still in fast mode. So you should be able to get through this as long as you haven't taken any damage. You should be able to get straight through. Like right here, there's three of them. You wouldn't be able to do this if you had damage, but you can actually get through it there pretty easily because you're in fast mode. So, Otherwise, just hit the switch and wait, and then you're good to go. That's the end of the chapter. I mean, it's that short. Um, not all chapters are going to be this short, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed so far. Again, we're doing a mixture of actual walkthrough and a little bit of speed run just to kind of uh, to go through it. I really hope you're enjoying this style. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Love you. What's up ladies and gents? Welcome back to 4-3 for Resident Evil Pro walkthrough. Hopefully you guys are enjoying so far. First things first is we're going to do that little glitch again. That way we can run here and we're going to head move straight forward. Pretty much don't dawdle around. If you waste any time then you won't be able to have uh, the precise timing that you need in order to get past this section. We're just going to be headed straight through this section, not even dealing with any of these enemies. Now, there are a few things that you can pick up along the way if you want to take them out. There's some money right there, and, and in that barrel, you can actually pick up a flash grenade, but we got plenty. So do this as quick as you can, as enemies will be following you. 
But if you can get in there quick enough, you can get in before you take any damage. This part can be a little tricky, so we're going to do the same glitch. You're going to see this pretty much in every video from now on. We are going to equip a hand grenade this time. One of the reasons why we picked up the hand grenade where the two big guys were, El Gigantes. Do exactly what you see here. You should be able to get through. If this guy does swing at you, just kind of bait him out a little bit. We're going to throw a hand grenade right towards this guy. Make sure it lands on the left of him. Because it destroys the door downstairs so that we can go through. Grab the key. Go ahead and do your glitch again. I think they call it the Dipman glitch or something. And then keep moving forward. You can see the door is shut. Or it's open. It's, there's no door left. And then you should be able to get through here pretty quickly. You need to uh, do the key that you just picked up. And continue to move forward. This next room, there is a strategy to get around it without taking the spiders out, but I go ahead and just take the spiders out. So we're going to switch over to our striker. We've got plenty of ammunition. We've saved up so much. Might as well use them sometimes, right? So we're going to take out these two first. There's only two in the room, and one shot from the shotgun should do the trick. And the reason I'm doing this is because, obviously, well, it's not a speed run, but I also want to pick up as much money as I can because I just like having enough money for whatever, you know, items I might need to get, even though we haven't actually purchased any items except for the rocket launcher, which we have plenty of money. So maybe you don't even need to worry about money at this point because uh, clearly, though, when we get to Act 5 or Chapter 5 or whatever you want to call it, uh, things are going to change a little bit, so... Just every time you see me going to these menus now, you're always seeing me doing this glitch. Again, it's very simple to do. All you have to do is just aim your striker, and at the same precise moment you're aiming, hit your inventory button, and then equip to anything else. Don't forget there's a spindle behind you, so make sure we turn around here and pick it up. If you want it, if you need money. This next room, I'm going to show you a huge glitch that you can do in the room. Everybody knows about this. This is the infamous minecart room, and there would be a huge fight that you'd have to get through, but you literally can just bypass the entire thing. I mean, it's so amazing how many things you can do in this game. So it takes me a little while to get used to it. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. So what you want to do is you want to aim right at the skull, kind of like up and to the left of the skull while you're hitting the X to get down. Always continually hold the run button. So aim up and left, while holding the run button and hit your X for to get down. It's a little tricky to pull off, but once you start to do it, then, I mean, you'll be able to do it a little bit better. It takes me like four or five times here, but... Um, again, just right here on this corner, aim up and left, hold down the run button, and hit jump down. If done correctly, this will happen. You'll glitch through. Now move around this side here. You can pick up that herb if you want to. Follow this exact route so that everything works the way it's supposed to. Now you're bypassing just umpteen amount of enemies right here. So it's crazy that, uh, that this is actually in the game. And I want to show you these cool things. I never get to really show you these types of things, but Resident Evil has been around so long that so many people have figured so many things out. So you want to go up to that point and then immediately turn back around. You'll see where your character kind of does this like little glitch in and glitch out. That's when you know you want to turn around and then stay as close to these... Uh, to this path as you can. Uh, pretty much, if you move any more to the right of the path, it'll just block you and you won't be able to move. So stay close and just follow the path all the way down. Now, normally up ahead, uh, there's going to be a cutscene that would play and, you, and it triggers a quick time event, but you can skip that as well. There's no reason to do it. So again, another very, very short episode, but I promise you guys... The, uh, the episodes are going to start getting longer again. Some of these chapters can be completed when you are going through them at a fast pace pretty easily. But we're not going to be doing every single chapter and sub-chapter like that. There are going to be some sub-chapters that we do where we are going to take out a lot of enemies and stuff. But I'm trying to make it to where it's the best for you all to get through these sections and have a little fun. Do a little something maybe you haven't done before. And hopefully you guys have appreciated that. So, as you can see, we just picked up exactly the item we need, and then we can continue to move forward. Now, once you go up here, simple, 
is you don't even need to worry about the glitch or anything like that, but get you something that you run just slightly faster. That's why we always equip one of these. Move to the right and then just go straight forward. Do this as quick as you can. Get into the elevator and hit the button and you should be able to complete the chapter without taking any damage. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the walkthrough so far. Don't forget, click join, become a member of the channel. These videos take a long time to make, to figure out, and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay, it looks like um, one of the videos got out of order, so let's see if I can't fix that here. Nope. Welcome back, ladies and no gents. crap. So one of the videos got out of order. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome umpteen amount of okay, enemies right so here. Let me, so it's crazy. Let me get 4-4 here. I, I do apologize, guys. <laughs> I did not expect this to happen. The video got out of order. So let me, uh, let me find it real quick. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh, no way. I must, I must have don't have it. Look, 4-3 is gone. Oh, that sucks. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I must have not saved chapter 4-4. That's crazy. How did I not save it? All right, so I'm going to do something hilarious here uh, in order to do this right. So I'll try to edit this live stream later afterwards. So what I'll do right now is I'll go to my channel and actually go to the video and I'll play the video, uh, which is kind of like exception, video exception here. All right, so where it is chapter four dash four? What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina One. To more Resident Evil Four, this is the final section in chapter four. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. So the biggest thing I can say about this chapter is it's not that difficult to get through. We're going to be doing a lot of fighting instead of speedrunning during this chapter. We're pretty much going to be taking out every enemy in this area, so you can handle it whatever way that you want. Now there is a obviously a faster speedrunning type of strategy to deal with this area if that is your if that's what you want. But I found it much, much easier since we have all of this ammo, these different weapons, that we're going to go ahead and take everyone out. It just makes things a lot more safer. And since we've already got to this point without taking damage, I think we're going to go ahead and go for the no damage run. And with that being said, we're going to be doing a lot more combat to try to uh, make sure that we keep ourselves from taking any damage, of course. So one enemy at a time. Uh, you can really get a lot of enemies to kind of funnel into you. Uh, once you get up here to this next section and just like kind of wait for them to come to you a little bit and then you can either use your shotgun or the method that I use which is take out their legs and then immediately go for the knife like um, like that. Try to get you know a few uh, quick time events here as well because those help with taking enemies out a little bit quicker. As long as no enemies you got to watch out for the left and right you can see that that guy fell so he's eventually going to be coming up. So that's why you see me uh, kind of looking left and right as there's people that will um, come from below, they could come from above, you don't really know. You just got to kind of pay attention to everything around you if you're going to go with this strategy. Again, I always like to go for the leg. I think it saves the most amount of ammo and we're going to be using the rifle a lot as well. To do, to do a few headshots. Now, some enemies in this part can't uh, be headshotted because they have the masks on, so you just gotta be careful. So now, no enemies are gonna come after you at this point because they can't get to you. So take this opportunity to uh, take out a few enemies via your rifle. You'll see that there's two more enemies coming this way, so you can actually take care of them pretty easily. Try to maybe land up a headshot if they get to this point, but because it's moving up and down, I'm just going to use the, the rifle to kind of just uh, do pot shots at them. We've got plenty of rifle ammo, and we're really not going to be using the rifle a lot more, like coming up in the later sections, which is why we're kind of getting some good use with it right now. Might as well. 
Again, we're not going for a speed run. Otherwise, it would be a completely different strategy, and you can get through this room in about uh, less than a minute. But it's super tough. I pulled it off, but it's not something that I think you'd be able to pull off on like a regular basis. So that's why I'm showing you this route, which I think is a little bit easier for you. Now, I messed up on that handgun shot. You want to throw the handgun before you land if you're going to do the handgun method. But um, as you can see, you've got to be quick on it. So if you're going to do the handgun, make sure you do it at the right time or else that guy with the crossbow can get you. And since we're going no damage, we don't want that to happen. All right, so you can see we've got three enemies on the opposite side, but they all have the face masks on, so we can't actually get uh, headshots. So in that case, because we have plenty of rifle ammo, you can always go with shooting the rifle. Well, we've got five left right now, but we don't really need any more than that. Another good method is to get over here and kind of allow them to jump to you. If you turn this switch, it will activate the other side. This allows the enemies to start uh, coming towards you. And then you can kind of shotgun most of them. We have so much shotgun ammo that, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and use that. Now, just keep an eye out on the crossbow guy. Whenever you see him get up, try to take him out as soon as you can. It'll make your life a little bit easier so he doesn't get a shot on you. Otherwise, you can just use a rifle or TMP to kind of knock him out a little bit. You can see he got a little close to almost getting hit with it by there. I'm going to go ahead and go this way because we're going to pick up everything that's in this area. Even though you don't really need to, except we're not going to pick up any handgun because we don't have a handgun anymore. There's another level behind here which you don't actually even have to mess with. The lever, what it does is it makes it move sideways and not just up and down. So now they go up and down both at the same time and then now they also go sideways, as you'll see here. Which made me miss that. <laughs> so if you actually, if you don't hit it, uh, you're a little better off. But as you can see, we've got some enemies down here so we can actually take care of these guys pretty easily since we dropped down here. So it might even be a good idea to drop down here. And there you go. All the enemies have been taken out. So now it's just a matter of getting back to uh, the second area on the other side. Pick up any uh, miscellaneous items that you can. This There's only technically like three rooms in this uh, chapter or in this sec subsection of the chapter. Uh, this one probably, I say the second one is probably the hardest to get through. Just because you've got a lot of enemies that just kind of get right up on you on the elevator. So I don't really have... Uh, I have a little bit of a strategy to get through that, but it's kind of what everybody does, I mean, in that situation. So you'll you'll notice that it, it can be quite tough if you're not on it and if you're not paying attention to where enemies are. So we're just waiting uh, to be able to climb over here, and then we're good to go. Once we jump down here, then we'll be able to go ahead and do the final switch, and then we've got a quick time event. Now, I have found the quick time event not to be too difficult. Uh, just make sure that you're mashing as quickly as possible because um, you can, I guess, fail this uh, rather easily if you're not, like, really, really super hardcore mashing. But it's pretty easy. Um, you're just going to hold down X for sprint, and then you're going to do left, right, and then a left and a right at the same time. Make sure you shoot this lock. That's why we got the TNT equipped. And there you go. You've just completed that room. And we didn't take any damage. Make sure you get your stri striker equipped again, because as soon as we get done with the cutscene up ahead, we're going to be doing the, uh, I think they call it the dip man. So nice you could join us, Mr. Scott Kennedy. You again. The sacred rite that's about to begin at this tower shall endow the girl with magnificent power. 
She will join us. Become one of us. This is no ritual. It's terrorism. Isn't that a popular word these days? Not to worry. We've prepared a special ritual for you. All right, so immediately uh, do your Dipman strategy. I've told you that already. You should know it by now. And then we're going to run up here. We're going to do this as quickly as possible. We're going to head to the left here. We're going to make sure we shoot this guy. It depends on if you let the cutscenes cut scenes play or skip. Uh, if you let them skip, enemies will be in different places. So it'll be a little bit easier but I always let the cutscenes play for you guys. Move forward so he doesn't grab you and then go back around and then head to the outside here and then move around. So now we've got the elevator part, which can be a little tough. Make sure that those are destroyed. Uh, if, he, if the dynamite guy hasn't destroyed the boxes, make sure that you destroy him. That way you have less weight on the elevator. So take out these two guys here. There's gonna be uh, two of them shooting at you. You don't really at this point have to worry about the dynamite guy anymore. Alright, so here this is where the challenge is going to be. Pretty much want to stand right here and you're going to aim down. Now I don't have a perfect strategy for this, I just follow it kind of. Um, you can get overwhelmed with enemies as you can see sometimes damage wise they don't all die. So it can be pretty tough. Try to aim as low as you can so you can get more of a spread on them. And as you can see some enemies will take quite a bit of shots to take down. Another strategy that you could use is literally just to stay in one corner. You should have plenty of ammo at this point when it comes to your shotgun. So if you literally just stay in one of these corners, uh, you can literally take them all out as soon as they're coming to you. It just won't be as quickly as you could get through this elevator, but that's not the whole purpose of this walkthrough. It's not to be a, the quickest way to get through each room. It's, it's a little bit of both. It's a little about quick while at the same time, you know, doing some combat, having fun, and uh, enjoying just the game itself. As you can see, the elevators stop when there's too much weight on it. So, again, I'm just going to wait in this corner here as we uh, take out most of these enemies. And there you go. Once you get to here, you can either take him out or just go ahead and go. We're going to go ahead and go. And then we're going to do the dip man again. That way we can get through this section a little quicker. Pick up any miscellaneous items that you see along here. Ones that you can actually use. I usually never pick up the handgun ammo, but you could pick up the handgun ammo if you want to sell it for a little bit of money. But you definitely want more shotgun shells. We have used uh, quite a bit... Uh, shotgun shells in this section. Once we head up the elevator here, then we have a merchant, and you guys know what that means. It means it's rocket launcher time. So we're going to go ahead and move up here to the merchant. Now, depending on what you do, either you can go ahead and sell a few things here, or you can wait until the next one, just as long as you have enough money to buy the rocket launcher, obviously, and that you have enough space. Some rare things on sale, Strike. What are you buying? Strange. So we need to move a few things around. Like I said, I am not the best when it comes to item management because I pick up a lot of things. But um, just make sure you have enough room here. Always the bottom two lines to put for that uh, rocket launcher. As you can see, we've got plenty of grenades. So the strategy for this uh, boss fight coming up is pretty simple. It's going to be um, three eye shots with the striker. And then when 
he kind of opens himself to show himself, then you're going to be able to do a rocket launcher to the face, and then you have beat the boss. It's not that difficult of a battle. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Guess after this, there'll be one less to worry about. All right, so get up. Try to do three eye shots. Uh, it'll take me a little bit more just because I didn't hit that first shot with the eye. Immediately switch to your rocket. And aim for his head, and boom, goes the dynamo. We're going to go ahead and loot the entire area. There's a lot of things down below that you can pick up. Uh, we're not going to really get... We don't really need any health items because obviously we've... We're not taking any damage. Um, but it is still good to have at least one or two health items on you. Because, uh, you know, we're still getting to the point where it could start to get really, really difficult as far as taking damage. Now, I do know that the island area... You know, I beat this game many, many times a long time ago. And if I remember correctly, the island area is definitely the toughest... One of the toughest areas in the game. Because now you've got enemies that can actually... Shoot you with weapons from far away. Not just crossbows, but uh, actual you know, regular weapons. So you need to be careful. We're going to do the best that we can to continue our no damage, but I can't promise that it's going to happen. I'll do everything I can to make it uh, continue to be uh, no damage, but we'll see how it goes. And you can always sell first aid kits if you need to. Other than that, pick up any other miscellaneous items. Now remember, because we're picking up a lot more items, we're going to uh, need to buy another rocket launcher coming up. So... Just want to be careful with that. And at this point, check to make sure that you got everything that you actually need. And then we're free to move on. Again, uh, pick up a few miscellaneous items if you need them. Uh, but don't uh, forget that there is a snake in uh, the bottom right one that you're going to get down here. So make sure you have yourself ready for the snake. And you can actually get it in one shot there. And everything else, I think that's random. Alright, so the only thing left is to uh, see the merchant. And um, this is going to be a lot of me kind of moving things around, just trying to get a little bit better item management and whatnot. But as you can see at this point, you know, we're getting to the point where it's like towards the end of the game. We have a lot of items, and we have a lot of things that we need to make sure is done correctly. So uh, some good item management here before we head to the island is, is obviously going to be a good thing. We're going to pick up a rocket launcher, and we're going to sell a lot of stuff. We're going to mix um, some of our big 
jewelry together, like the crown and those uh, the other two things can actually be mixed into the crown. We're going to do that here, and we're going to go ahead and sell it. Other than that, that is going to be the end of the chapter. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Again, thank you, you know, for the love and support on the game so far. I am going to be finishing the game, but right now, literally, when you're seeing this, I'm like a day away from having our first baby. So um, it's crazy right now. So Thank I'm just you. letting you guys know that I'll try to get this. I don't know if I'll be able to get it done before RE3 comes out, but it will still be finished, I promise. I just, um, right now, the baby, got to get with her, and uh, and then once we get back from the hospital, we can continue these videos along with uh, RE3. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks again so much for watching. Love you all. Take care of yourselves, and I'll Thank see you, you on the next one. Is Peace. <laughs> Thank you. What are you selling? Ah. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Strange. What are you selling? Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Stranger. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Need a ride, handsome? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, so give me just a second. I got to reload this thing again, obviously because of what happened earlier. So now we can finally go into chapter five and we've got all of them ready. I'm going to click play. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrator One. And to of more course, Resident it's Evil 4. This is the final one. section in chapter four. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Ready to go. So the biggest thing I can say about this chapter is it's not that difficult to get through. We're going to be doing a lot of fighting instead of speedrunning during this chapter. Crap, hold on. I'm messing up completely here. No? We're pretty much going to be taking out every enemy in this area, so you can handle it whatever way that you want. Yeah, give me a second so I can get this. There we go. How do I show the video? <laughs> I have so much problems with this, it's hilarious.
What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina 1, to more Resident Evil 4. This is the final section in Chapter 4. Hopefully you guys enjoy. So the biggest thing I can say about this chapter is it... to break it out to you, but Salazar is dead. Yes, it seems that way. Sadler, why don't you give up and let Ashley go home? Perhaps you are disillusioned with overconfidence, just because you killed my small-time subordinate. Sadler, you're small-time. Oh. <laughs> Rive in my cage of torment, my friend. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina1. We are in the final chapter of Resident Evil 4. So first off, we're going to go ahead and do the Dipman here. There is a glitch that we're going to do. It's pretty easy. Do exactly what I do. Get against this wall. Slightly move forward while pressing uh, X as much as you can so that you actually glitch through this wall. Might take a few times and then follow the directions that you see here. There's a lot to explain in this section, so I got to kind of keep moving. But follow exactly what I do and you should be good to go. You should go into a cutscene there, and then you can go ahead and do the quick time event, and you're good to go. Go ahead and use your Dipman again. Uh, make sure that you stay to the left of everything that you see here, especially when you get past this bridge. Stick to the left. That way the guy points instead of uh, comes for you. Here, you're just going to jump across to the right, and then you're going to go ahead and do your Dipman again, and then we're going to just kind of follow the path that you see. There's going to be a guy with a rocket launcher, but we're going to get close enough to him. Shoot him really quick, and you shouldn't have to worry. So we skipped a huge section because of that glitch that we did. So I know there's like a whole section down there that you just missed. Maybe a good five, six, seven minutes. So this is a very cool uh, glitch. Once we get past this area right here, all you're going to do is uh, dead man back and uh, pretty much move straight forward. Whatever you do, don't slow down from this point because if you want to get through this section without messing with these uh, enemies right here, then you're going to have to make sure that you continually move forward and do not stop. Go for the door and you should be good. Here we're just going to be... Um, you don't have to do the dip man here, but I do it anyways just so I can get used to doing it more often. But just follow the path straight forward. Now, this next section, there's going to be a guy that kind of comes out of an area. So if you, as soon as you go around this corner, quick turn to the left and then immediately move past. He will not grab you and you should be good to go. And then move to the right here through the door. I know what I'm doing all is super fast. So if here, there's going to be one big guy. He's uh, the... Uh, uh, what, what do you call that? Um, Ashley. Mad Max. Yeah, he's the Mad Max type of character. I wish I had a little bit more time to explain everything going on, but if you just repeat the, the things that I've done so far, it's not that difficult. This is definitely one of the easier chapters to get around. Here, we're going to go ahead and do a little strategy as well to get past the guards. It requires you to do this dead man glitch, otherwise you're going to have to take out a bunch of enemies. So get up against here, go slow, wait for the dynamite, go forward, turn back around, go to this corner, turn around, wait for them to start throwing the dynamite, move forward. I know it's a lot. I have to explain so much, and you go through it so fast. So just, again, go back and forth, you know, slow down the time. That's something that you can actually do in YouTube. You can actually slow the time down so you can uh, get a little better at it. Here, you're just going to follow the signs that tell you where to go. And we have uh, definitely one of the scariest enemies in the game coming up here. However, we're going to make them look like they're not scary. Although, I still get very nervous even when I go up against these guys. Even though we're not really going to be dealing with them that much. And we're going to be pretty much going right by most of them. Except for one. That's why we have a rocket launcher. We're going to be using that on one. This puzzle is pretty easy. It's going to be um, three red, two green, and one blue.
once you get the key card, you're gonna immediately want to switch back to your Dipman so you can run past the um, the big baddie. I like to call them the uh, degenerates. <laughs> There's going to be one right around the corner here. Bait him, move forward. As soon as you pass the corner, go back. And then you should be able to get by him. It's very scary to do the first time, but you should be able to get it with ease. You're going to do the same thing on the one up ahead. In this next room, there's a new weapon that you can pick up if you want. However, we're not going to need it, so therefore I'm not picking it up. It's not really a weapon. I think it's the... Um it's the scope that allows you to shoot the little things off of these guys. You can see it right there. Here, the same thing. Move forward. Get him to uh, get him to bite, and then you can go forward. And use the key card. All right, so this section um, is a lot easier than you might think. Just do what I do here. We're not going to pick up anything because we're pretty much max items right now, and we've got enough of everything. So here, immediately dip man. We're gonna wait until we see the crossbow guy turn in the opposite direction and look behind us. Once he's done that, immediately run around to the right and go around these enemies. And you should be able to get by. The crossbow guy, can he can hit you if you don't wait for him. I mean, you can risk it, but I prefer to stay a little safer. Uh, there is something you can pick up right there. I believe it's a, um, a flash or an incinerator grenade, one or the other. This is where Ashley is, but we can't pick her up just yet. We need a key card, so we're going to go to the next room. All right, so this one we're going to do a dip man right after we enter the door, and then we're going to run to the right. And we got to be super quick, and you shouldn't get hit. Uh, this didn't take me very many times to figure out, and it's actually pretty easy to do. You just don't get hit. As long as you're running constantly, you will not get hit. We're going to move forward into this next room here. And this is where we're going to take out the one and only Degenerate. He is a special Iron Maiden type, which means he has spikes coming out of his body. And we're going to use the rocket launcher to do this. You just really got to aim anywhere near him, and one shot will actually take him completely down. Now, this is why you would pick up that scope, so you can shoot off the individual spores on him, or uh, plogus on him, and then that's how you can take him out the normal way, but with the... With a rocket launcher, it just makes things so much easier, right? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to do another dip man once we get up ahead. But you need to switch to your flash because we're going to flash all those enemies that you saw me get by earlier. But you want to wait to do the dip man until we open this door. Immediately switch to your flash. As soon as you get up the stairs, throw the flash or else they'll hit you and then rush. Done correctly, didn't take any damage. Pick up this uh, flash here. So you just, you know, lost one, picked one up. And now there's only two other enemies, and then we are uh, at the end of this chapter. Very, very short chapter. Bait this guy out, and then go ahead and move forward. You should have enough time to get into the room as long as you're mashing that X button to uh, to go in fast. Leon, you okay? Come on, let's get out of here. There you go. Chapter 5-1 complete. Very easy and very quick. This won't take you that long at all to do. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. By the time you're seeing this, I am practically having my first child right now. So this is a, an amazing experience to have. So love you guys. Take care of yourself. And I'll have the video up for you as soon as I can. Be safe. Peace out. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to Chapter 5-2 in our Resident Evil 4 Pro walkthrough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed so far. Immediately pick up the shotgun shells that are to our left. We don't need to pick up that note. Now, this is a little tricky. You're going to have your flash grenades ready, and you're going to tell her to wait. Throw your flash grenade down. Tell her to follow you. Bait out an attack from this guy, and then try to move uh, past him. Should be easy to do. We're going to be using our flash grenades a lot because we have a strategy coming up. So we're going to do another flash grenade right here in this room. And then we're going to move up and uh, go ahead and flip this switch and do immediately another flash grenade throwing straight at the wall that we're looking at. Turn around. 
and then continue on. That's why we have all these flash grenades so we uh, can use them because we gotta actually be empty by the time we come up to about two more rooms and you'll see why. Here we're gonna have a cutscene and we can continue on. Looks like this is it. Ugh, it stinks. Sure does. No way, Leon. Way. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. You... What is this? Come on, let's go. All right, so immediately we're going to go ahead and uh, hit the operate. He's going to be chasing us. We've got two of these, uh, I like to call thing? them degenerates, um, following us. So just do everything that I do that you see here, and you should be able to get by it uh, pretty easily. So we're going to use one more flash grenade in this room, and then the last flash in the next room. The, you need to make sure that you are empty on your flashes, uh, so that you can actually do this strategy that we have for the uh, the room after that. So throw it up. Tell Ashy to wait, hold, wait, hold, while you're uh, crossing that little chasm there before we got to the degenerator. And what it does is it makes him come forward a little bit quicker. Push that three times, and then you can move on. So here we're going to use our final flash grenade. Just throw it in the middle somewhere. Go ahead and get right by all these enemies. Now what we're going to do is do exactly what I do. We're going to make sure your thing says empty. You're going to get to the edge, turn around. You're going to aim your knife and then immediately hold the regular aim button like you had a weapon. But keep it held. You must keep the aim of your weapon held. Not the aim of the knife, but the weapon held. And if you've done it correctly, Ashley will stay up there, and then you keep it hold. Hold it still. You're still holding the left trigger. Uh, I don't think this can be done using a mouse and keyboard. I only think it can be done using a controller. So now I can let go of the aim button. Look, there's a gate here. And you'll see the cutscene here, and it will trigger all the enemies, but the enemies will not see you or know that you're there. They will all stay pretty much right there. And then you just stay in this exact spot and location and you do this uh, two more times. So you'll check it and you'll do Leon twice. As soon as you do the third final one, immediately move to your right and then get out of the room as quickly as can. If you've done it correctly, then you can get by all these enemies. Remember, you have to aim the knife at her, make sure she's down, immediately while you're still aiming the knife, hold the left trigger for aiming your weapon, keep it held, turn around, go down, run around and do all that. It's tough. But once you get it, it'll become pretty wait, easy. Follow me. Half her wait and follow here. We're going to try to bait this guy out to an attack. If done correctly, uh, you should be able to do that. Immediately move up here. We're going to head to the left. Tell Ashley to wait at this door. That way she wait. just keeps it open. That's going to open up the next section and then tell her to follow you as soon as you pass. We're going to do oh. another bait and switch. Move around. So that way Ashley doesn't get stuck, as you can see, it's very close. Uh, so, you know, try to have the best timing you can. Tell her to go and do this. Immediately, as soon as you hear the click, tell her to follow you. And then I messed up, and now she's waiting there. So don't make the mistake that I do, but come over here, make her follow, and then you can do this. Wait until the three are lit, and now. So you're going to wait till the three are already lit, going into the circle. All right, so this is probably the toughest challenge in this section, or in this, uh, I don't know, sub-chapter, I guess, but go ahead and pick up anything that you need to pick up along the way. It's actually not that tough. It's just there's a lot of RNG stuff that you have to watch out for. This is the auto-scroller. You're going to have a lot of enemies to face off, but I'll show you a few ways to get around them pretty easily. Once you get up, the cutscene will start. Leave it to me, Leon. So I guess the strategy is if you stay to the very edge and you keep moving as if like you were trying to jump off, none of the enemies can jump onto this section. So this makes this go by a little bit easier. So just keep running towards the edge and no enemy will be able to jump. I know it looks a little ridiculous, but for some reason, once these enemies come, none of them will be able to jump up on you. Now, you do want to make sure that no, none of them throw anything at you, like this guy here will start to throw something. If he does, try to make sure that you hit it. Other than that, you don't need to kill, you know, pretty much any of them. Go ahead and take them out a little bit at a time, just to make sure until the uh, actual vehicle starts to go again. 
Now you're going to turn around. You're going to have some guys coming up behind you here. Again, as you can see, they'll just kind of stay right there. So just stay against this back and keep moving backwards, and then they will never come up. You have to do two shots each on these guys. Once they're done, you turn around, and you'll see that all the enemies have actually went away from you, and they're stuck in a corner all the way back there. It's hilarious. Here, you're going to have to do four shots at the truck. And at this point, those enemies are still back there, which means that no other enemies will really spawn here. There's only going to be one, and you don't even need to shoot this guy. And you pretty much made it into the next section, so pick up whatever items that you think you need. You won't be able to catch up. Now we just got uh, the truck again. Same thing. Shoot it four times. I missed the first shot. All right, so go ahead now, pick up anything that you actually need. Make sure that you're fully loaded. This next section is really tricky. It might take you a few times, but you got a checkpoint right here. Pick you up some money. Go ahead and do your dipman as soon as the truck stops. I'm leaving it to you. Now, you need to do almost exactly what I do. So I get a little bit lucky because both of them come after me, but most time only one does, but it's still technically the same strategy. Go up, bait the attack, go to the left, and then immediately go to the right. Stay to the right till you get to the edge there, and then hopefully you will be able to get by. It didn't take very long uh, to get this down. As you can see, that guy still might uh, shoot you with a crossbow, so be careful. Here, as soon as you drop, restart checkpoint, and all the enemies disappear, and you're good to go. And you can start the next section, which is a little bit tougher than what we just did. Now, like I said, so uh, chapter 5-3 and 4 are going to be where the game really, really starts to get tougher, in my opinion, because you've got some boss fights and you've got a few other things that you have to worry about in these uh, Krauser and then the next couple of chapter subsections. So here, all we're going to do is aim up. If you aim in between these two guys, you'll knock them both down. But if you aim at one, then you only hit one and you have to do two shots. So try to aim in between them and you should hit them both. Same thing for the next two guys. They're going to be as soon as you pass this point here. Immediately after you shoot these two, turn around. And if you need to, reload to make sure that you're good to go. The more ammo you have, the better. Do not try to not let any of these guys get up here. Because the Plagueis will come out of a few of them. And then it becomes really, really tough. So as soon as the truck starts moving again, turn around. And then you have these guys to shoot. If you don't think you can get a shot on them, move all the way to the edge and then turn around. That way everyone is facing you. And then just continually shoot everybody off until you get to the point where the you hear the truck in the background and that's when you want to turn around. Alright. Shoot the vehicle. Make, make sure you wait until the actual laser sight shows it. Congratulations, you've pretty much completed Chapter 5-2. All that's left is uh, a little bit of merchant spending and a cutscene. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, hopefully you all have been enjoying. I told you that I would get this finished before April 3rd and Resident Evil 3 came out, so we're trying to stay true to that word. So hopefully you guys enjoy uh, us finally being able to get this done. So uh, the rest of the video is going to be me pretty much doing a little bit of item management just to make sure that I'm good to go for the next few sections and then there's going to be the cutscene at the end and then that will be the end of the chapter. So again I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done for the Welcome. channel over these uh, 10 years that we've actually been on. Uh, in February we hit our 10 year anniversary on this channel. So thank you for helping us get to 300,000. I know things have been slow in the past few years uh, but we're going to do our best to try to bring that goodness back those awesome walkthroughs professionally done awesome live streams to get you guys kind of interacting and more uh don't forget to become a member it really helps out this is what we do for a living and now that we're bringing a new baby little girl into the world i want to make sure that i can continue to provide for them and this is how we actually get paid is via youtube now no longer do we have facebook so make sure you follow us on our discord as well as i'll keep you updated on all the baby pictures and videos and all that kind of stuff over there and it's a great way to talk to other people that love the 
types of games that we do, which I know you guys are like me. We love stealth. We love challenges. We just love gaming. So hopefully you all are staying safe amid this whole virus situation, and hopefully we can look back at if you're watching this video maybe a few years later. Um, I would love to know, you know, what, what was going on in your mind during this time and whatnot. And I mean, I'm sure things of the world has totally changed at that point. So uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. Click that bell. Make sure notifications are turned on so you can be ready for whenever videos come. <laughs> be safe, thank you. and we'll see you next time. Come Peace out. It's already begun. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Sinistrain01, and we have more Resident Evil 4. We're going to pick up some gold here. This is the professional walkthrough. This is chapter 5-2, I believe. Um... Or actually, no, it's 5-3. That's right. This is 5-3. I get a little confused sometimes because there's just... There's a lot of many levels inside Chapter 5. What's the news on our friend, Leon? He's not making it easy. The sample? Sadler's got it. It seems he sniffed out our little game. Perfect. Just so we understand each other clearly, I don't trust you, nor does Wesker. If you try to do anything clever, I will kill you. Is that so? You know, I met Wesker long before you. We'll see soon enough if you did. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Whenever you watch this video, ladies and gents, I am now the proud father of a baby girl, Isabella. Yay, yay, yay. And it's so, it's so funny. So, Strain, how did it go? Hopefully everything went well. Talking to my future self. Here, we're going to go ahead and do our dip man. Uh, you want to make sure that you do it here so you can uh, get by all of these guys uh, pretty quickly. Do not stop. Just keep going and you should be able to get by without any problems. Next section up is a um, very easy section. However, you can't skip any of the cutscenes. This is the big quick time event with uh, Krauser, of course. So sit back, relax, enjoy the big boss fight. There's actually going to be two Krauser boss fights in this level. Three boss fights in total. So this is uh, one heck of a level. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And here we go. Been a long 
time, comrade. Krauser. I died in the crash two years ago. Is that what they told you? You're the one who kidnapped Ashley. You got John Quick, as expected. After all, you and I both know where we come from. <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> the sample Sadler developed, that's all. <laughs> Leave Ashley out of this! Oh, I needed her to buy Sadler's trust in me. Like you, I'm American. <laughs> Got her involved just for that? in the red dress. Looks like we have the upper hand here. <laughs> you may be able to prolong your life, but it's not like you can escape your inevitable death, is it? You knew each other? More or less. Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here. Maybe some other time. Enjoy the reunion with your old friend? As a matter of fact, I did. Wonderful. I wouldn't want my special guests on the island feeling unattended. Guess I'm supposed to thank you, right? Ah, I have an idea. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, oh. <laughs> Enjoy the fun. So remember, easiest way to get through all of those quick time events is very simple. Smash X and A, LT and RT every single time. Just like kind of roll them off your fingers. If you do that, you should pass every single quick time event without any problems. That's at least how I do it. And we're going to go ahead and exit. This is uh, definitely heavily inspired by the first Resident Evil movie, The Hallway of Death. So what you want to do, as soon as the cutscene is over, Make sure you're switched to a hand grenade, and then immediately hold run and up, like hold it right now. And you should be able to get through without ever having to wait. And then do the quick time events just like I always showed you before. It's pretty easy to get by once uh, you do what I do. Again, as soon as that first cutscene starts, already be holding run and up. And you should be good. You have one more quick time event. Pressing the button again after you've hit it the first time actually makes the lasers come quicker if you're going for more faster times. Of course, there's a few collectibles in this room. You can pick up this one first. Of course, we're going to sit in the chair. This also shows you, uh, gives you an opportunity to see that there is another collectible. Although, it really doesn't matter if we get it or not because we have plenty of money to get the final rocket launcher. And as you can see, right there it is. So... This is unfortunately the last time we're going to be using our TMP. You have treated us well. And we're going to be going behind the door and heading down to the next boss fight. Now what I can tell you about this next boss fight is it's not as difficult as it looks. Uh, if you stick to the patterns that you see here, uh, you should be able to get by it actually rather quickly. 
without too much problems. And you'll be able to do it without taking damage, which of course is what we've done this whole game. And it's going to be amazing that accomplishment, the feeling of, of actually beating this entire game without taking any damage. Although chapter 5-4 is one of those chapters that will uh, definitely challenge you in every sense of the word. So this is the second to last merchant. There's only one more merchant after this. There's really nothing that you need to get from this merchant. Um, but it's always good to look over to see what you have, how much money you have, what you've been doing the entire time. And also, it's always a good point to save whenever you get the opportunity to, just in case your game crashes and you don't have to go all the Welcome. way through the whole sub-chapter again. That's one of the things. Anytime you see sale, a, uh, a typewriter, it's always good what to save you, just so that you don't have to. Because, you know, these older games, sometimes they can crash. You know, you never know what your computer can be doing. Usually you're okay if you're on a console. It doesn't crash as often, but computers are known to crash a little bit more depending on what you got running in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and save here as well. And in the next merchant area, we're going to save as well, just in case. Just Come to make sure that we are safe. Anytime. All right, so now that we've already saved, we can move on. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your striker equipped before the cutscene of the boss fight starts because we're going to need to do a dip man. So we're going to go ahead and do a dip man here uh, just to go by this area a little quicker. Um, this is that area where you're like trapped in a cage and you've got to do like a little maze thing to get out. It's a little tough to explain in the short amount of time we have. As soon as the boss fight starts, you want to dip man straight forward, go to the left, go to the left, and uh, use your knife to hit the, the stage or the, the lever. And then pretty much just follow exactly what you see me do. It's going to be tough to explain it all at once. So make sure you rewind, uh, try these just boss fight over and over. You always start back where we just were um, when you do a checkpoint. So here we go. Ashley. What is that? All right, immediately, dip man. Go forward and into the left. You should uh, miss that hit. Use your knife. It doesn't matter where you aim. It'll hit it. Hit the switch. Turn around. Keep going forward. Now, he might be in a different spot than you, but as long as you're moving forward, you should be good to go. Another knife here. And do the uh, second switch. And then immediately go for the door. Now, the second part, you can kind of take your time with this first section. Uh, is not too difficult. You're going to want to get out your uh, shotgun and you're going to shoot this hatch over here. As soon as the cutscene is done playing, you're going to shoot uh, the boss a few times and then aim towards the uh, the other latch when you shoot him a third time. And you'll, it'll under you'll see what I'm saying right here. Move up, shoot. Be staggered and then aim at that one right there. See, now the latch is done. So go ahead and dip man again, but this time we're going to dip man to something a little faster, which is a grenade. Always dip man's faster. That way you can uh, easily get by him. Move to the left. Do the second switch. Immediately go backwards and then go straight. Don't go to the right here. And then uh, now we're in the third and final one. The or not? The, uh, yeah. So the the boss doesn't show up until you hit the button. The second button, should I say. So you've got a lot of time to relax here. You don't have to have your nerves getting you. We're going to go to the left here, and you're just going to throw a grenade in this corner towards that area. doesn't matter. Uh, just throw it towards the area. Uh, you'll get stunned a little bit, but it doesn't take any damage. And that'll open that door. And then you can go ahead and click the button. The boss will not spawn until you click the next button. And then once you do, you're immediately going to start, move forward, and then immediately go right into the little itty-bitty area right there. You can see it's right next to the switch. If done correctly, you shouldn't take any damage. And there you go. What you're going to do now is move forward, press the X in order to grab a hold of this. And you have done the first boss fight encounter for this boss.
Here, pick up any miscell miscellaneous items you need, like the uh, the magnum ammo. There's a reason we have been picking up magnum ammo throughout this, because we're going to be using it up ahead. This boss fight is another easy one. You're going to do one rocket launcher to the face, and then you're going to swipe him once. But you want to wait until his invincibility frames go off, and then you're good to go. Usually when he starts to get back up, that's when you can actually swipe him with a knife. And you've just done it. Two boss encounters done. One more to go. Pick up any other miscellaneous items that uh, you might want to pick up or whatever. As there's a few things in these tunnels and caves. And then we're going to be heading up the ladder. Next up is the final section in this chapter, or in this sub-chapter, which is the f uh, penult or the, the final Krauser fight. There's, a, I think, uh, four sections to the Krauser fight, if I'm not mistaken. But you can get through it rather easily. Here you can pick up some money, I believe. Or no, it's a hand grenade, yeah. We're going to dip man as soon as we open the door. And you need to be quick because there are guys that can get to you. We're going to go inside this little tent. As soon as we pass the tent, move to the right, go inside, and go down the hole. These guys will be following you eventually. They take a long time, but they do follow you all the way down here. We're going to visit the final merchant. And this is where we're going to get rid of our TMP. And we're also going to go ahead and buy our uh, final rocket launcher. You can kind of hear them that they're coming. It takes a long time, so you've got plenty of time in this area. So don't, like, you know, don't take too long, Welcome. but at the same time, you don't have to, like, completely rush. Got some rare also, this is where you can sell the rest sales, of your gear if you stranger. want. But because I've already pretty much got enough money, selling? I'm not really going to sell any... Uh, high valuable items, even though, as you can see, I could, because there's really nothing else that we need. We have 322,000 because we've done a really good job of making sure we pick up a lot of weapons. We haven't done any upgrades on any weapons. We're still going with the base stuff. The only thing we've ever upgraded was our uh, attache case. So we're going to get the rocket launcher. Then we're going to take away the TMP. And then we're going to trade it for a Killer 7, which is the Magnum. And as you can see, we have plenty of ammo. We have 15 right Thank now. What and we'll be able to pick up some more Magnum ammo in this uh, next section. But go ahead and sell the TMP ammo, and go ahead and sell your stock and your TMP. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Is that all? <laughs> Alright, go ahead and save. As you can see, he's heading towards you now. Like how he comes rushing right there at the end. Alright, here we go. This is the final area of this subchapter. We're going to dip man and we're going to get out uh, just a grenade. With a grenade, you move slightly faster. And with the dip man, it's even doubled, so it's uh, the fastest way to move. And here we go. These boss fights aren't too difficult to figure out. So, you two are all hooked up now, is that it? Where's Ashley? Do you really want to know? She's beyond that gate. But you'll need three insignias to open it. What are you gonna do, Krauser? There's one in the north, and the other in the east. And let me guess. You got the last one. It pretty much means you're on a tight leash. Sounds like you thought this one out pretty well. Immediately run up, hug this left wall no matter what. 
You'll do a TMP grenade or a crossbow, but just hug the left wall and it would, won't hit you. We're going to go ahead and pick up the Magnum ammo. Immediately turn around and go back out the door. We're going to stand at the top of the steps and we're going to aim down with our knife. We're going to hit him once and then move over, aim up to hit his face. And then that's how you can get past that first section. Here, it depends on if you restart a checkpoint. Here, I'm not restarting a checkpoint. This is what will happen. There's three different things. You're going to dead man here and then move up. Either he can throw a grenade, he can do a crossbow, or a TMP. So I don't know which one he's going to do for you, but for me, he did a grenade. If he does a grenade, just keep going. You're fine. If he does a TMP, move to the right, wait for him, and then go. If he does a, a crossbow, move to the right, wait for him, and then go. If you restart that checkpoint, he follows behind you, so make sure you dip man where we dip manned, and then just move forward and then you're good to go. If you restart that checkpoint, it's the easiest one of them all. Umbrella, to bring order and balance to this insane world of ours. A psycho like you can't bring order or balance. You don't seriously think a conservative mind can chart a new course for the world, do you? All right, so here you're going to immediately turn to the left a little bit, and you're going to shoot him with your Magnum. Now, he dodges the first one, but immediately back up. Back up again a little bit, and then shoot him again. And then you should be able to uh, finish it. All we're going to be doing here is moving the statue into that location right there. Uh, there's only some handgun. I don't know if that changes, but there's really nothing to pick up here. So we're going to move this about five times. Or about, I guess, a little bit after four times. The next section we have the robots to deal with, but you can get by them pretty easily if you move quickly. Of course, make sure that you dip man after you press this button. It's going to allow you to be able to move through that section easy. This is also where the checkpoint will start. Now, when I dip man, I always go slow, but you can get to the point where you can get really fast with it. Quick turn right here, and then quick turn right again. Flip the switch, continue to move forward, and then we're going to go through the door, and then jump down. Krauser will be right behind you. Here, you can just, uh, you're still in dip man, so you can just quickly move, follow the route that I do, quick turn left, go straight towards it, quick turn right, another one, and then move forward. Quick turn right, and you're good. You fight for, comrade? I'm past, I suppose. <laughs> Umbrella. As soon as you're done with the cutscene, immediately move up to the left and go forward, or else that could possibly shut on you, so you got to be quick. Move up here, and then we're time for the final section of this level and the final Krauser encounter, which is the easiest one of them all. It'll take you a little bit of time to do the beginning of it, but you should have it after that. So we're going to go ahead and you just keep your Killer 7 out. You don't need to do any of that. Um, this is a pretty straightforward boss fight. It will take you a few times before you get the hang of doing it, but uh, after that, you'll be doing it with a breeze. Here we go. Two down, one more to go, Krauser. <laughs> we'll see about that. Completely, Krauser. Prepare for your death, Leon. Quick time event. Immediately move forward, holding the run button, and to his left. Then quick turn to the right. Backwards. Get him in the corner. Swipe up, and then swipe down. So as soon as he goes um, down, go down with him. He stays up. Stay up with him. Keep rinsing and repeating, and you should be able to complete it very easily. Make sure you don't move on him too quick when he gets in the corner. Let him do two backflips, and then you start moving when you start to see him doing the second backflip. Hopefully that makes sense. So immediately when it starts, move forward to his left, quick turn to the right, do a 180, move forward a little bit to make sure he does the second backflip, and then get him in the corner, and then just rinse and repeat with the knives up and then down. 
Here, we're just going to be inserting the tiles, and then we are good to go. That is the end of this chapter, or sub-chapter, 5-3. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. Become a member to support the channel so that we can keep doing what we love to do. And uh, it's been my pleasure to bring the walkthrough to you. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying it. Love you guys. Take care of yourself. What's up, ladies and gents, and welcome to the penultimate pin episode of Resident Evil 4 Professional Walkthrough. Hopefully you guys are joined so far. Go ahead and save here. It's going to help you out tremendously. And uh, let's continue. A lot to discuss in this area, so just do everything that you see me do, pretty much, and uh, we'll explain along the way. So, it seems you killed Krauser, too. How shall I return my appreciation? <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought he was with you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Did you really think I'd trust an American? To tell you the truth, I was contemplating how to get rid of him. But thanks to you, that's no longer necessary. You were just using him right from the start. Oh, I must hand it to you. You've demonstrated quite a bit of promise by killing Krauser. When your assimilation with Las Plagas is complete, I'll have you serve as my guard. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to decline your generous offer. I have prior engagements. <laughs> Enjoy your smart-mouthing while you can. Verifica la presión de esa válvula. ¿Y tú? ¿Viste algo? No hay problema. Damn. Hey, it's about time. Sorry, bad traffic. I'll cover you. All right, so here we're going to go ahead and do our dip man. And we're going to go ahead and move forward. Dip man into your killer seven. Make sure you stay along the left side so you don't get hit. Wait till he's done. Move forward. We're going to skip this cutscene by pressing your skip cutscene button. You need to do that in order for the enemies to be in the right place so we don't actually take a hit. Try to get around them without doing any damage or taking any damage. Immediately move up. We're going to shoot the lock off with the killer seven, and then we're going to uh, kick the door. We're going to go ahead and dip man again, but this time um, we're still going to do the same dip man, and we're going to keep moving forward. Here you need to be quick, so continually move up. We're going to shoot this uh, guy once we're coming up, the shield guy. Hopefully it'll knock the other guy back a little bit so that you're able to move around him. We're going to immediately turn around and shoot this guy. Go into your loadout, get a hand grenade, and throw it down. And then get down, uh, flip the switch. That's going to be our checkpoint as well. Then immediately get down. Now, if you're doing it like me, this is the checkpoint strat, meaning that if you if you do this a first time go, there will be one less enemy you have to worry about. Actually, when you do the checkpoint, it's harder. So that's why you go back to that save. But I didn't do that. This is the checkpoint. So we're going to dip man into a uh, grenade. This is can be a little tough. Uh, dodge this guy here. Any way that you can figure out how to dodge and do it, and then continue to move on. Throw your grenade down at that guy, so that way it uh, causes him to die. 
Now this can be quite tricky. Sometimes the guy with the uh, dynamite will kill himself, so try to move up close enough to where you don't take damage. That won't always happen like that. In this version, because we did the checkpoint, we have an extra guy down here who shoots crossbows at us. He's not normally there if you're able to get it on the first time, but I guarantee you won't be able to get it on the first time. So shoot everyone that you see me shoot just to make things a little bit easier. Now this is an endless amount of enemies. So all you're doing is taking out the guys that are particularly going to really, really be in your way when you're trying to head down. So shoot these guys with the rifle. And at this point, we're going to dip man back into our Killer 7. And we're going to wait right here. You want to wait because, as you can see, these guys are going to start infinitely coming down. But if you're up here, they will not move towards you. They will move away. So wait until all of them are down and wait until they go back the other direction. As you'll see, if you do that, see how they're running back? Now you have enough time to get through and to the right without anyone hitting you. I'm gonna climb these. Now, since this is the reap checkpoint, Mike will not help you and destroy this section, which normally he does if you do it in the non-checkpoint. Uh, Pick up the magnum ammo here. Make sure you take this guy out. Like, he'll just keep getting up. He takes so much uh, ammo. Here, we have so many freaking grenades right now. Incendiary grenades. So we're going to start using some of them. Just to make this a little better. See how Mike doesn't shoot that section for you to jump down? So you got to do this yourself. So just kind of wait here. Throw a few of these. Uh, make sure you don't get hit. As you can see, they, they'll keep getting back up. They take a lot of damage here. Just try not to take any damage yourself. Look down to make sure nobody is directly below you. And once you see that it's clear, go ahead and make your way. There you go. That's how you get by those two sections. Very tough to do, uh, but wow. Now we can kind of calm down a little bit. Um, one more tough section in this area uh, coming up in the next few screens. Other than that, that's going to be it. But there's still a lot more in this chapter. So again, what you saw me describe before is not something you're going to be able to probably complete the first time around unless you just do it a different way, but hopefully you're able to figure it out like I was. Drinks are on me. Yeah, hey, I know a good bar. Mike! Make sure you're the next to go, Saddler. Ooh, I'm sorry, Leon. Saddler, you bastard! It's nothing to get all upset about. Don't tell me you've never swatted a bothersome fly. In essence, it's the same thing. What did you say? Insects' life doesn't compare to human lives. When you've acquired this power, you too will understand. Guess it's another good reason to get the parasite out of my body. <laughs> I wish you luck. Alright, so we're going to pick up whatever's in front of us. You can look around a little bit. There's not really much else to pick up in this area, so I would just continue to move on. Essentially, you want to make sure that you have at least... Um, three or four, maybe even five at the least, amount of magnum ammo rounds when you go into the final chapter, into the final subsection, because you're going to need that for the boss fight. So as long as you have enough, and we're going to pick up some more magnum rounds uh, here in just a second, you want to make sure that you have plenty of magnum rounds to make the boss fight a little bit better. And we're going to go ahead and exit this area. And move on to the next. 
once you drop down here, you're going to get a cutscene uh, with Ada, and then we will continue from there. Leon, you okay? Yeah. We have to get that parasite out of your body. Yeah. But before that, I gotta save Ashley. Fine. Let's split up. There is nothing in this room for you to pick up, so don't even worry about it. Alright, so here you're going to definitely want to make sure you pick up this flash. Also, this is where your three magnum rounds are going to be. you got to have that flash. It's very, very important. So pick up that flash. Uh, down here is where the magnum rounds are going to be. So pick those up. There's three total. So those are the minimum you need. So make sure you pick those up. Continually move forward. We're dipped right now. So you should be able to get by these guys without having to worry. All right, so this next section, we're going to dip man first, follow the exact route that I do. You're going to want to skip the cutscene that plays as soon as you hit the door. I mean, this is just, it happens so fast, so just do what you see me do. Do not stop here. We're going to skip this cutscene right here. We're going to immediately turn around and then go to our left, shoot the barrel. It should blow up people. Like, it might not happen exactly the way it does for you, but hopefully it does. Head up here, shoot this guy that's coming at you right now so he doesn't hit you, and hopefully that guy doesn't hit you as well. Going to do the first activation here. Remember, we picked up the key card from the guy that we shot with the barrel. Now here, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, do your dip man again. Now I uh, just want to play it safe, so I'm going to make sure that I shoot this guy with a shot just to be safe, because he can grab you sometimes. And do this one. At this point, we're going to go back and then around to the left. Switch to that flash grenade. Hopefully you don't get shot by the crossbow guys. Throw it as soon as you go around this corner here. Move up, pick up another flash grenade right there on the table. Hit this. And then you're going to throw the, grass, uh, the, the flash grenade behind you right here. If done correctly, when you go down, all of these guys should be uh, blinded by the light. And they're wrapped up like a douche. Uh, another roller in the night. Just hope and pray you don't get hit there. Make it past here. There's guys right behind you. And uh, juke these guys out. And there you go. Ladies and gents, you just did probably, for me, the hardest part in the game. You'll soon harbor an awesome power. Yet it seems you would rather choose death. I'm taking Ashley back, whether you like it or not. Ah, oh, the audacity of youth. Now! 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on. This is technically the last merchant, but you don't actually need to pick anything up. I'm just going to go ahead and sell the rest of my trinkets. There's absolutely zero reason for you to even mess with this guy. This is maybe just in case there is some upgrades that you're wanting to get. Again, I've done a no upgrade walkthrough, um, so we're not going to be getting anything. As you can see, we've got plenty of shotgun ammo. We even got... Um, Welcome. Rifle ammo, and of course, you definitely need to make sure that you Your have some magnum ammo. Good. That's going to be the most important for the final boss fight. Sell whatever it is that you want. Get whatever it is that you is want. That it's up to you. But we've already got the rocket launcher, so we're good there. And that is uh, pretty is much it. There's a one more room that you're going to have to worry about with uh, enemies. And those enemies will still be a part of the next and final chapter so make sure that when you start the next chapter two that you're aware that those enemies are behind you so just keep in mind out even if you restart it they're still there but hopefully you guys enjoyed this was definitely one of the harder uh sub chapters in this game for me uh it took me quite a while to get past those first two areas with all the the with the madhouse of people in that last area that we just got through earlier that was definitely probably even tougher but here, what you're going to do is do your dip man. You're going to tell Ashley to wait and then follow when you're about ready to turn the corner. This is going to make it so the guys do exactly what you see here. Wait. Follow. One guy points, the other guy tries to hit, move past him, and you're good to go. This hunk of junk? I, I don't know about this, Leon. There's only one way to find out. You operate. You sure you want to do this? Yeah. All right. Here goes nothing. How are you feeling? Like a million bucks. I thought you were gonna die. All right, guess I'm up. You okay? I don't know about you, but I think it's time we go home. There you go, ladies and gents. End of chapter 5-4. Only All right, ladies and gents. The final part for our Resident Evil 4 professional walkthrough. This is it. Immediately, you're going to want to go and start moving because you have those enemies behind you that can get in your way and can run up to you and get you. Other than that, pretty much we're done except for one final boss fight. And I uh, really do hope you guys have enjoyed the walkthrough. It's been my pleasure to bring it to you right before Resident Evil 3 comes out. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. Hopefully it was educational as well as entertaining and just fun for you guys to watch. So all I can explain in the next section is we're going to be using our Killer 7. And we're going to be doing two shots on his eyes and then a rocket launcher shot on his eye. Then we're going to run to get the final rocket launcher and then that is it. There's nothing else you need for the rest of the map. Just exactly what I told you. So all you technically need is um, two more rounds uh, for the Killer 7. Here we go. Something's not right. Ashley, you stay here. Ada! Hmm. Mm. Better try a new trick, cause that one's getting old. Uh. Uh. You okay? I've been better. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, I think you know. 
The American prevailing is a cliché that only happens in your Hollywood movies. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, you entertain me. To show my appreciation, I will help you awaken from your world of clichés. Ada, stand back. Alright, so immediately, shoot his left eye, then we're going to shoot his eye in the middle. Back up, get out your rocket launcher, and shoot him directly in the eye. This will not work unless it's directly in the eye. Use this. Now you're going to want to run and make your way to the right here. You'll have a quick time scene. Get yourself up and go get the rocket launcher, equip it, shoot it anywhere near him, and that will be the end. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze, like a glove. So you got plenty of time here. You don't have to dip, man, like I do, but it's just, if you want to be a little bit quicker for a better time, then go ahead and dip, man. There's a funny glitch that you can do with the um, jet ski at the end. I actually, I tried to do it, but unfortunately I messed it up. So what you want to do is when you get near the jet ski, have your striker equipped, do your dip, man, right when you're next to the jet ski before you actually hit uh, the button. If you do it, then go up to your uh, key treasures and do it. That is how you can actually do the glitch. I just forgot to, and I went back into the real game and then clicked um, the interact button. But if you actually go to your key treasures and uh, do the jet ski keys while you're in the menu from when you were going to uh, use the Dipman glitch, then you can actually have a really, really funny glitch of Leon kind of um, just jet skiing out of there <laughs> with no jet ski on him. It's, it's pretty hilarious. So do exactly what I do here. It's just in this menu here, once you do your, go up to key treasures and then do it that way instead of see, I went out and did it and that's why it didn't work. Hang on, sweetheart. Out of the nats, uh, this is pretty simple. Um, just move left and right. First one is gonna be to the right. Next one will be to the left and then to the right. Just keep following the path, do the jump here. Make sure you press him forward. Get yourself around all of these obstacles. Go to the left there, then go through here. Now you're going to have a, a few different lefts and rights that you need to do. And you're going to be going back and forth here. So you're going to go right, left, left, 
right, right. There you go. Congratulations. Let's go home. Sounds like a great idea. Mission accomplished. Right, Leon? Not quite. I still have to get you home safe. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? <laughs> Sorry. Somehow I knew you'd say that, but it doesn't hurt to ask, you know? So, who was that woman, anyway? Why do you ask? Come on, tell me. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. The characters and events depicted in this game are fictitious. Any similarity to extra persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This game is protected in the laws of the Raccoon City Police Department and their authorized duplication distribution distribution may result in the middle. Hunnigan, is that you? Finally, the line's jack free. Hey, Hunnigan, no glasses. Forget the glasses. What's the status of the mission? I've rescued the subject. We're returning home. You did it, Leon. Thanks. You know you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty? Story of my life. Oh, Leon. Well, there you go, ladies and gents. We have done it. We have completed Resident Evil 4 on the hardest difficulty setting while taking, taking no damage and no not using any upgrades. And there you go. Yes, we died seven times, but that was obviously just while trying to learn each and every single section. But, you know, you can just continue on. Um, not, not bad with the hit ratio, 88%. I'll take it. 266 enemies cleared, and we get to unlock a few cool things while uh, you complete this game mode. So let's upload that to the leaderboards. And as you can see, we can buy an infinite launcher and a Matilda from the Merchant, and we unlocked a Steam achievement. As well as we get the new uh, PRL412, absolutely free. Great weapon, takes out loads of enemies. Go ahead and save, and that way if you want to start up a new game under that save, then you get those cool options. So there you go, ladies and gents. I really hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Don't forget to leave a like. Took a lot of time and effort to get all this done and into you guys. But uh, thank you for the love and support. Don't forget to become a member. It helps the channel out. Leave a like, comment. Uh, what did you like about the walkthrough? Could I do anything better? Uh, let me know. Uh, all that's left is we could still do separate ways, possibly. Let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments below. Other than that, love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Be safe, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.